Sarah. And this is Rachel. And this is The Ripper Diaries, a podcast where we rip apart episode by episode The Vampire Diaries. Warning, this is a rewatch podcast, so we always bring up spoilers, and we definitely will today. Oh my god, this week we're talking about season three, episode 19, Heart of Darkness. Yeah. You already know, especially if you're a Delana shipper, but even yeah. everyone, everyone knows. Yeah, it's such an, a memorable episode. If you're a Iconic. Delana shipper, it's one of your favorites. If mm-hmm. you're not a Delana shipper, it's going to be one of your least favorites. <laughs> true, true. Um, but either way, it's really memorable because we get another ghost appearance, which I feel like mm. most fans of the show like a ghost appearance. You know, love a ghost, love this ghost. Yeah, yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. Um, but of course, it's not the only storyline going on in this episode. Um, the title itself, Heart of Darkness, is I mm-hmm. think a reference to our other main plot here. Definitely. Um, because of course that is about you know mm-hmm. darkness. <laughs> Someone with a heart of darkness. <laughs> yes, yes. The like unfathomable acts that people will commit is what that yep. book is in reference to. That is, of course, in reference to Alaric. Yeah, for he's, sure. He's our person whose um, heart is currently full of darkness, unfortunately. <laughs> so at the Salvatore house, Elena, we see her like walking down the stairs into the basement, and mm-hmm. she's holding this big duffel bag. And of course, there's that cell down there for whatever reason that yep. they always use. So she goes in there and she like looks at the door of it where the window is like kind of barred over and she calls out to Alaric who confirms that it is still him it is not dark Alaric currently Mm -hmm. so she unlocks the door and goes into the cell and um they have like a cot set up in there which they did when Liz was locked in there (laughs) too it's like if they like the person they'll set up a bed for them otherwise (laughs) they get the Rebecca in the dirt treatment (laughs) um but yeah so he's just like sitting on the bed Mm -hmm. and he warns her that she shouldn't be in there because it kind of defeats the whole purpose of like locking him in a cell they don't think Dark Alaric can be like it's me yeah oh it's not I'm not Dark Alaric right now Yeah, (laughs) yeah no come on obviously But anyway, Elena's like, well, you still need the essentials. And she drops in front of him a bag with the basics that he needs, toothbrush, clothes, Mm -hmm. a boring book. And Alaric (laughs) picks up the book and is like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And Elena's like confused immediately being like, what? No, I grabbed. And then she, of course, realizes Damon, obviously. obviously. And she says, he thinks he's hilarious. And Alaric says, at least one of us still has a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And Elena asks him if he's sure about being kept in a cell. It isn't really that necessary. But yeah. he says, like, no, this is the right place for me to be. Until you guys can convince my highly uncooperative alter ego to fess up to where I, or he, hid the white oak snake. Mm-hmm. Which, it is really funny of them to put him in this cell. Because I do agree that it's not that necessary. Like, yeah. they must be able to board him in a room somehow. But also... They don't really know what he's capable of, so probably better off yeah. just being like, put him in the cell, just make sure it's fine. They were yeah. being way too safe, or like way too risky last couple episodes. Yeah, they like, got to overcorrect. Yeah. yeah. He was, they were playing it way too fast and loose, letting him just go home. True. So, makes sense. But anyway, Elena mentions that they've looked everywhere for his stake, but they just like haven't been able to find it. Mm-hmm. And Alaric asks, like, what will Klaus do if they end up not being able to yeah. find the other stake? And Elena says, wage war, murder people, you know, Klaus the stuff. Usual. <laughs> the usual. What yeah. do you think? And Elena pulls up a chair and she sits down now, like, getting kind of serious. And mm-hmm. she tells him that Stefan is going to be watching over him because now that Klaus knows where Jeremy is, it's not safe for him. So Damon and Elena are going to go to Denver to pick Jeremy up. The setup. A road trip yeah. episode. Yeah. And Alaric kind of gives her a look and he says, why do you say that? Like, you're waiting for me to disapprove. Mm -hmm. And Elena replies, I don't know, me and Damon traveling across the country. And Alaric questions her, I guess I'm more curious to hear what Stefan has to say about it. And Elena reveals, actually, it was his idea. He thinks that I have some unresolved feelings for Damon. Mm -hmm. And Alaric asks, do you? And she says, I guess that's why I'm going on this trip, so I can figure it out. It's absolutely crazy to me to go on a road trip with someone to figure out if you like them or not. (laughs) Which I guess is the real test. If you can go on a road trip with someone and still like them. Yeah, that's so true. You've seen my worst on a road trip. (laughs) 100%. That's true. So. Yeah, yeah, when we have a a casual app, I'll tell you guys about the time I thought Sarah was going to kill me. (laughs) It brings out the worst in us. It really does. So I guess maybe that is the test. It, but it really, really is a crazy one. It really is. Also, Stefan's wild for being the one to be like, oh, do 100%. this, like go. Oh, I'm gonna have so many comments about that in some later scenes. Like about I love him it's... for this, but yeah, I mean, I 
yeah i'll talk about it later too where it it does feel like it's this you know pushing her away kind of thing too yeah but for sure anyway we got to get into like the travel of it all yes but before that upstairs stefan is standing in front of the fireplace staring into the flames (laughs) as usual (laughs) he's got a lot to think about he's he's got a lot to feel right now he's atoning and damon (laughs) is like bringing the luggage downstairs and stefan says that he hasn't heard from klaus yet Mm -hmm. But he expects that they will soon, obviously. For sure. Klaus is just going to let this go. No, no. Um, Because Stefan has the one stake that they still need to give to him, but obviously they have one missing Alaric that Mm -hmm. they can't find. And Stefan says he will get it out of Alaric. He'll figure out where it is. And Damon's like, I like the confidence, Stefan. I just don't share it, but I like it. And Stefan's like, you don't think I can do what it takes? And Damon points out, you're good, Stefan, again. You're mm-hmm. in control. Sorry, you might get the girl, but you lose the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that he acknowledges. And then he's like finishing yeah. that thought. He like says, speaking of, and Elena walks into the room. Mm-hmm. I, it's so wild to me how blatantly they're recognizing I know. The, like, Elena of it all and how yeah. like in the middle she is between them. It's like. Why pretend? Yeah, I guess we should just be honest about this. Yeah. Yeah, which I guess is helpful, but yeah. weird. It is weird, wild. crazy. And so he asks Elena, Damon does, have you ever flown first class? Mm-hmm. And she says, who did you have to compel for that? <laughs> and he scoffs and says, I use miles. Of course. Of course. But also. They're loaded. Yeah, yeah. They have yeah, they have so much money. Yeah. yeah. They, they were doing all the logging in 1912. Oh, yeah. yeah. But also, they fly. That, like, kind of ruined my head canon. I just I imagined that they drove, which makes no sense because yeah, it would be so far. Yeah, and you never see them, yeah, drive. But yeah. I guess they drive around when they're in their places. But yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was like, wait, they flew. I know, I thought that too. I for, kind of forgot. Yeah. I just always picture them, like, road trip in a yeah, car. That's same, so their vibe. Same. Which um, they are in a car for a lot of it. Like, there are a lot of scenes in cars. But That's true. But yeah. obviously, the main traveling was a flight. Which yeah. I actually, this was the next thing I was going to say is... Just imagine Damon Salvatore in an airport. <laughs> He's taking off his shoes at security like the rest of us. He's like, yeah, you know, getting his bags checked, whatever, getting pat down. You yeah, can't no. compel them to be like, don't do it. It's too obvious. <laughs> you get every yeah. security guard on you in that place. You're yeah. like, why has nobody checked him? <laughs> so you just got to do it. It would be humbling. So It would definitely be humbling, yeah. Might help. Might help the Elena situation. I was going to say, she might be like, oh, okay, he's just a person. Yeah, he's yeah. a person. He's just a person. He's real. The yeah. bonding experiences, but how they can't find their gate. I don't know. Yeah, it feels yeah. Like, I feel like this is fraught with romantic tension. Mm, for sure. For sure. But anyway, obviously this is all going on. Mm-hmm. And Damon picks up the luggage and he like leaves to go, you know, get them ready, whatever. And Elena's left standing there with Stefan. And she looks at him and says his name, but he just says, be safe. And she stares at him for a moment. It's awkward, but obviously there's nothing to be said. So she walks out Mm -hmm. the door. Yeah. So. Yeah. Lots of interesting setup for where we're at. And the Selena stuff, we won't, that's the last we get of it this episode. There'll be a lot more in the next one. A lot more in the next episode. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And prepping for the next episode, we see at the school, you probably already remember, but the next episode will be a decade dance. Love, love. Yes, love always. So we see at the school, there are a bunch of teens, you know, decorating for the dance. We see there's like a roaring decade, roaring 20s, roaring yeah. decades, roaring 20s sign, all the different like 20s, you know, decorations. And Caroline comes in and looks around and she sees Matt and goes up to him and is like, what is all of this? <laughs> and Matt is like, it's the decade dance. Don't you remember making us sign up to help? And Caroline is like, no, this. And she picks up like one of the boas. She's like, this is the 20s. We were supposed to be doing the 70s. And then we see Rebecca's also there, you know, running this place like the Navy. She's like, too flashy. This shouldn't look like the World Fair. It should be a speakeasy. She's bossing these teens around. Why she's not just compelling them? I don't know. Yeah. But then Rebecca sees Caroline and goes up to her and is like, thank God you're here. Like, get to it. Start setting up the tables. And Caroline is like, what do you think you're doing? And Rebecca, of course, says, you know, somebody has to be in charge. And Caroline is like, yeah, me. I'm the chair of the dance committee. The theme is supposed to be the 1970s. And Rebecca just says, so you'd rather dress in tacky colors and bad hair than be a classic flapper from the jazz age? Honestly, I don't know what my brother sees in you. <laughs> oh, boy. I love Rebecca. 
Um, and Caroline says, you know, maybe he sees a challenge. Unlike some other people, I don't sleep with everyone I make eye contact with. She was wild for that she one. She was wild for this. It's just a dance. It's not, though, but it's just a dance. And Matt tries to, like, diffuse the tension. He's like, maybe we can do both decades. Both decades, twenties sure, and seventies. Sure, I would have, I would have killed him. I would have killed him. Yeah, yeah, if I were Rebecca, I would have snapped his neck. I would yeah, like, I can't with him. And they both, of course, Rebecca and Caroline in unison are like, no. And then Rebecca's like, come on, Matt, don't be a coward. Tell Caroline how much you loved my twenties idea when I came up with it and presented it to the group. And Matt, Caroline turns around and is like, traitor. Like obviously, Matt should just inherently take her side. And Matt just says, bell bottoms and disco. I don't know. This just seems cooler, which I don't know. It seems kind of odd for Matt, but like. I know. I kind of thought that too. He seems like he would like a 70s vibe. Yeah. But obviously the plan but, anyway. So yeah. Maybe. Yeah. The plan anyway. So maybe not his real feeling, but anyway, Caroline, of course, is not happy. And she's like, whatever. Just have fun at your stupid dance. And then she walks away to leave. And we see outside she's going to her car and Matt is chasing after her, calling her name, telling her to wait. And then Caroline kind of stops at her car and turns around smiling at Matt and is like, impressive, you sold it, which I forgot this was a plot. So I was like, she also sold it to me. Matt sold it too. And Matt is just like, you bought yourself a day. And Caroline tells him thank you and says like, just keep her, meaning Rebecca, occupied and be careful. And Matt tells her like, you too. And then just tell him I said hi. Okay. Yeah. And Caroline nods and gets into her car. Yeah. And just goes to see. Yeah. We'll see, mystery. Yeah, yeah. mystery person. <laughs> mystery but you person. can probably already guess if you don't yeah. remember. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's but a I fun love that scene. I know. I, I love know. that Matt loves a little plan. Yeah. Also, I love that there's this element of the dance prep, even though that's the only scene we get of it. Yeah. It makes so much sense since there's so many event episodes to instead of just keep adding more event episodes to add event planning episodes. Yeah. We yes. can't have an event every single day. No, I know. But you got to prep for them at some point. So I like yeah. when they have these little things. They're also prepping too. at the start of the next one, I think, too. So Yeah, I think they are. Um, I like that there's like more going into this one. It's a nice like way as a writer to like give you know people Something somewhere to, to do. react. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a fun little like yeah. moment between them. <laughs> yeah, love the Matt Caroline combo too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Um, but yes, of course, back to Alaric's whole situation at the Salvatore yeah. house. Stefan comes down into the basement, heading towards Alaric's cell. Alaric is just, like, laying on the cot with his eyes closed. Mm -hmm. His book is, like, laying next to him. (laughs) He's obviously supposed to be sleeping. But with his eyes closed, he says, Do you know how hard it is to fall asleep when that is what you're supposed to do? And Stefan says, I know it's not easy. So Damon suggested that I bring something to help speed up the process. And he gives Alaric a bottle of whiskey. Again, Damon really loves to enable his alcoholic friends and family. Really, really does. Um, but obviously in this situation, it's, it is pretty dire. So I guess yeah. we can give him alcohol again. Um, so Stefan pulls up a chair. He like has gone into the cell at this point and he sits down with Alaric, um, mm. cause he's going to drink with him. He has a glass ready to go. And Alaric just asks, so road trip, huh? And Stefan says, yeah, I needed to stay here. Yeah. And Alaric asks, why you? You know, it doesn't take much to babysit me while I sit here waiting for a psychotic break. It doesn't take much to babysit me. Remember yeah, the last what? person, <laughs> Meredith tried to babysit him like two days ago and got stabbed for it. So I would say it does take at least a little bit to babysit yeah, him. Yeah, <laughs> At least a vampire at has least to be a babysitting vampire. him. Yeah. Which even then I would be slightly worried. So risky. But yeah, anyway, I was like... Let's not be so blasé, because you killed Yeah. Your, not killed. You stabbed your last Nearly babysitter. killed. Yeah, yeah. would have killed. Um, but anyway, Stefan comments that they have limited time before they're going to have to resort to other methods. And Alaric asks, so you're worried that you're going to have to torture me? You don't think Damon could have done that? Mm-hmm. And Stefan says, look, Elena needed to go on that road trip with Damon. No matter what I go through to get her back, fighting my bloodlust, trying to gain control of my life again... None of that matters if she has feelings for somebody else. I really like this line that no matter what I go through is always like as soon as he says it, it's so visceral in my Mm -hmm. mind. It's always like a line I remember and I just really like the way he delivers it. Yeah. But it's such an interesting rhetoric to me to have this like, it's kind of like we talked about earlier, like both brothers seem to like 
force Elena at the other and like yeah. won't accept her in like a weird way. Yeah. Won't accept the happiness. And it's weird that he's like, I almost and he's not saying he doesn't want to, but like, what's it matter if I fight my bloodlust, if right. I get myself under control, if I live the good guy life, mm-hmm. if she doesn't choose me. Yeah. I don't know, because you don't want to kill people. Yeah, because you don't want to be like You should still do those things. Yeah, yeah. Even if she doesn't want to get back with you. Yeah. But I don't know. I thought that was interesting that he felt that way about the situation where no matter what I go through to get her back, none of it matters if she wants somebody else. Like, that kind of surprises me from him. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, it's kind of, I feel like it might be, like, there's almost, like, a flip now where he was so hyper-focused on, like, his revenge for Klaus that now his kind of hope of becoming a better person is, like, he's holding out for Elena in That's a way. That's true. It's all channeled in Elena. Yeah. Because know after this he does become a better person and he stays. And he stays, he yeah, stays, like, that for a while. He stays even after they yeah. break up. So, yeah, I do think it is, like, maybe like you said, like, it's just all directed at her Yeah, right he now. needs someone um, to kind of help him get through this. Yeah, yeah. and it's Elena at the moment. Yeah. But... We'll see how that all pans yeah. out. Yeah. I also have to say, I love this combination. How often do we get like a Stefan Alaric? Oh, almost never. Like one-on-one. Like I re- never. No. Yeah. I remember the last time we talked about it, Jenna was alive. We were like, this is weird that Stefan and Alaric are interacting. Yeah, yeah exactly. And if Jenna um, was alive, that was a last long time season, ago. So. Yeah, they don't yeah. very often, if at all. Yeah. Um, but I kind of liked it for this episode. It was just like a fun, interesting it is different because they have such an interesting vibe they're both like intellectual respectful yes. people who yeah. have like a dark side yeah yeah <laughs> so they kind of get each other in a way they do really get each other in a way it's fun because i mean damon and alaric obviously get each other in a way but yeah best buddies I, it's, yeah but it's, it's almost cause, dynamic because it's almost that damon and alaric are like um diametrically opposed in some way yeah that yeah. helps like their friendship but with yes. Stefan, it's not as like there it's mm-hmm. not as prevalent so it changes the dynamic in an yeah. interesting way yeah love them but <laughs> changing dynamics changing scenery we oh, get a yeah. little scenery photo montage telling oh, yeah. us we're in denver yeah we've made it that's how i should have i feel like that's like a classic flight thing you start showing oh, that's pictures true. of the place yeah, we're just suddenly there yeah you're suddenly there yeah we get the photo montage, and then we see Elena and Damon are rolling up to some batting cage looking for Jeremy, and Elena spots him and goes over to him, and meanwhile, Jeremy is, like, swinging at the ball and misses, so Damon gets his little dig in and says, next time we compel him, we'll make him good at baseball. I loved that. <laughs> yeah, I love that, too. Damon can't help himself. He's kind of at Jeremy's throat, like, every, he's, like, yeah. he hasn't gotten in his, like, older brother digs in a while. Yeah, yeah, he really so he's getting them all like, out yeah, right now. He really does. <laughs> Um, but anyway, Elena tries to get it, Jeremy's attention and like calls to him. And Jeremy is, of course, like, if you're here, like, Elena, like, what's wrong? Like, he immediately is, you know, he knows something's up. And we get a little like time jump after Damon must have given him the rundown of what's been going on. And we like cut into, you know, Damon saying, Catherine sired us, Rose sired Catherine. All we need to do is find out who sired Rose. And they're, like, starting to leave the batting cages. They're getting ready to obviously go do what they're here to do. And Jeremy's like, so you traveled across the country to get me to talk to a dead vampire. And Damon says, you know, dead vampire is redundant, but yes. <laughs> and Jeremy is like, well, I can't. I could talk to Anna and Vicky because I knew them. I never even met Rose. Yeah. But Alina points out that Rose spent a long time running from Klaus as well. Like, she and Damon were close. Maybe there's a connection there that we could use. And Jeremy's like, okay, whatever, fine. Can we do this later, though? My friend just got here. And yes, Damon, I actually have some. I'll (laughs) call you when I'm done. Yeah, anticipating the dig. Yeah. I'll call you when I'm done. And Jeremy goes to, like, walk away. And if you're watching closely, you can see who it is already. Um, But on a first watch, you're not really looking that close for it. Um, But yeah, as Jeremy walks toward his friend... Elena turns around and sees Cole, who Jeremy, like, then greets. So yeah, clearly, like, that's already who he's friends. there meeting. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> Elena tries to yell to Damon, Damon, it's Cole. And right as Damon, because Damon had his back to where Cole is coming in, right as Damon turns around, Cole hits him with a baseball bat. A wooden baseball, a wooden baseball bat. bat. Which breaks it in half. Damon falls to the ground. Jeremy is like, what are you doing? The fact he did not immediately know something know. was up. Imagine being Jeremy <laughs> in that split second before, because Elena then like immediately is like, he's an original. Imagine being Jeremy in that first <laughs> split second. He's like, this is my good friend. Yeah. I met someone normal here. Thank God. 
I know. He's like, I know I told you that Damon guy's a jerk. <laughs> but he, and he bullies <laughs> me, but I didn't mean hit him with a baseball bat. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, yeah. Like I said, Elena quickly reveals, like, Jeremy, Cole's an original. Like, get back. Get safe. And Jeremy is just like, what? And Cole's like, no hard feelings, mate, but we're not best buds. Aw, <laughs> so sad. Jeremy. He didn't need to get him like that. I know. <laughs> And then Cole grabs an aluminum baseball bat and, like, swings to hit Damon with a bat. But Damon grabs it, and then with his other hand, he picks up the broken baseball bat, like, half of it, and then stabs Cole with it. Yeah, and kills. Yeah, kills Uh him. Cole falls to the ground, and Jeremy asks if he's actually dead. And Damon is like, no, this is just a head start. Like, let's go. Yeah. So Elena and Damon, like, Damon kind of grabs her, and they leave. Yeah. Yeah, run. Yeah. Um, Hide. (laughs) Yeah, run and hide, which... Finally, I love the Cole's back. I love Cole. I love Cole so much. And also, I wanted to say, I've been waiting to bring this up for a while because Cole's been gone for a minute. Yeah. But I was looking at like the footnotes on the wiki and vindication for you, um, Karina Adley McKenzie, one of the... Oh yeah, like the showrunners. Yeah, one of the showrunners. Yeah. Did tweet like back in 2012 um, about the episode 1912 that Damon and Cole were supposed to have a backstory. Like, they were going to give them something, and then they ended up cutting it, which, I, I don't know. I, I did bring it up in that episode because Cole wasn't even in the episode. Yeah. Um, but now that he's back, I'm like, I actually, I feel like I love these two. I feel like that would have been a way better story if Cole was maybe somehow the one that was Damon's teacher. Oh, yeah, not better Sage. than Sage. Yeah, and I feel like that makes more sense kind of goes to what i was saying before like they should have been two separate characters like oh. damon's teacher and then finn's love interest yeah like maybe it was never supposed to be sage it was always yeah. supposed to be like cole but they were yeah they were like i don't know they just made it yeah it's I probably too hard because the timing of cole getting in the box was so close to that that's true it's 1914 i think we find out in yeah the it's something like that yeah it's close it's close it's like late and 19, so to him to just randomly 1910s. be by himself and mystic fall, which not to say like yeah. years is enough time for things to change, but still it's, they probably were like, let's not box ourselves. Yeah. That let's much. not. Yeah. Yeah. Especially cause we also know at this point they had already pitched, um, an original spinoff yeah. and dangerous liaisons was when they had already decided that they were going to pitch mm-hmm. a spinoff and they were probably like, let's not, let's not even try to back yeah. ourselves in a corner. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. Um, yeah, so it's like I would have liked them to do it, I know. but it's kind I of... I wish they'd done I, it. I understand why they didn't. But I get why they wouldn't. Yeah. But I love that. You were so right. You called that. Yeah, I love that they had they a little... They hinted at it. They definitely hinted at it. I do wish we had gotten to see what it was, but... Yeah, we'll never know. But yeah, at least you're vindicated. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I already felt vindicated even without it. <laughs> Fair. But yeah, so... Yeah, Cole... Also, for Jeremy there, how did they not send him photos or a dossier or something on every original? Okay, watch out for these five. I had that thought too. I was like, well, I guess they didn't interact because Jeremy didn't go to the dance and dangerous liaisons. He didn't go to the ball. Yeah. So whatever. But yeah, how do we not like sending him photos like the family tree, like a poster board like you do in school? I feel like they must know, especially, which I guess they know that's why they're there, because Bonnie revealed that they just assumed nobody knew where Jeremy was, but he's with, like, a family friend. There's obviously some connection somehow. Yeah, it's not like you just randomly sent him to, like... Yeah, some random, like, house on the prairie that nobody's ever heard of. There's a connection. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I also wanted to say about the scene, I love the visuals of it. I love the red of the batting cage. Yes. I love Lena's jacket, which she's worn before. Yeah. And the scarf combo. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it with the scarf. And something about her jeans, like the silhouette of that outfit, Mm -hmm. I really, really liked. Yeah. Um, And found it very flattering and like cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, Damon, he's wearing a blue shirt and it like perfectly matches his eyes. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I was like, I love this. I he, love that. He takes it off like in the later, you know, <clears throat> next scene. So yeah. you don't see it as much. But in this scene, I was like, the outside lighting, I was like, it really is like, yeah. the same color. I loved yeah. it. I know. I do love a good like different location. Yeah. The batting cage is fun. And I like Jeremy in the red sweater yeah, too. Yeah. I feel like all the colors and everything about it was Looked just. Looked really good. Yeah, it felt different. It's, Definitely. It's, again, this is why it's like a favorite episode for a lot of people because it is it stands out visually. Yes. The story is great, obviously. Yeah. But, like, just different locations, too. Batting cage is so fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it just works in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, but taking us to another location is the motel that they end up going to in Denver. Mm-hmm. Elena, Jeremy, and Damon are, like, getting their luggage out of, like, their car. You see, like, the mountains in the background. Yeah. They're at this, like, 
one of those motels where all the doors open to the outside. Mm-hmm. There's like two levels. And they start walking up the stairs to their room. And Damon says, for the record, she's the one who wanted to stay in a motel, not me. <laughs> and Elena turns and like makes a face at him, obviously like so done with the Damon antics. Yeah, come on. And Jeremy's like, where are we? He lives here. <laughs> I was like, what? Have they been driving for hours somehow? Even though that's like, doesn't make sense in the plot. How is he like, where, where did we go? Like, I was like, what is happening? Um, but anyway, he's Hello, somehow Jeremy. lost and confused. <laughs> even though he went with them. They blindfolded. Yeah, they gave him no info also because Damon's only response to that was corner of somewhere and nowhere where Cole can't find us. That's all he said, so we don't even know where they are. Who knows? So maybe they have been driving a little while. I don't know. We probably drove like a little bit. Yeah. At least to be not in the the batting cage area where he could easily find them, but. Yeah, still. I don't know. I was like, why is he so lost? (laughs) But anyway, Jeremy just is like talking to himself now. He's like, I can't believe Cole is a vampire. (laughs) I feel so bad for him, though. That is so so bad for Jeremy. He probably was so happy to have a friend, and of course, it was a vampire. Of course, it was an original vampire. Yeah, it has nothing to do with him. Yeah, which Mm -hmm. Damon also calls out. Of course, he can't resist it. Of Hit course. He's, he's down. He Keep him when he's down. Damon says, Well, didn't you find it weird that you made a friend so fast? Have you met you? <laughs> he loves going in on Jeremy. He does. Elena immediately glares at him and says, Not helping. Yeah. <laughs> she just. She can't stand it anymore. No. So they finally get into their their like motel room, mm-hmm. and Jeremy confirms that the spot will work to Rose to talk to Rose. It doesn't really you know matter where they do it. Yeah, yeah. And Damon like closes all the curtains so they have privacy, and he says, "All right, Whoopi, what do you need? <laughs> Candles, incense, a pottery wheel." But he does go on to say, "Like I know how it works. Yeah. They push from the other side. You pull from this one." Mm-hmm. And Jeremy asks, "You got a picture of her?" And Damon says, "A." picture (laughs) from our trip to disneyland like no i don't have a picture what are you talking about (laughs) he did like that yeah it's pretty funny because like why would he have he would never for like a week and yeah we were doing photo ops every day um but anyway damon then just calls out one of the most iconic damon salvatore quotes one of the most iconic Mm -hmm. vampire quotes potentially Come on, Rose, you're not going to actually make us wait, are you? I know you're obsessed with me. <laughs> I hear that on TikTok all the time. It's so good. It's one of the best Damon quotes. Yes. I love their whole, like, Rose and Damon ha- had so much dynamic. chemistry. The best dynamic. Yeah. Like, and they stay having it, even though they don't even interact because she's a ghost. That's true. She doesn't she's really, dead. I guess yeah. she kind of talks at him, but like. Yeah, he that's true. With her. He's just like thinking about her and yeah. just immediately being like Rose vibe. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, they're some of the love. best like best friend pairs. Damon and Rose is mm-hmm. like what Lexi and Stefan is also. Yeah. Um, but they don't they have no way to give the flashbacks or anything Mm-mm. with Rose. So this is the next best. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Elena scoffs at that comment and rolls her eyes and she goes to sit down next to Jeremy, who's at a little table now. And Jeremy asks Damon to just like tell them something about Rose. Just talk about her. And Damon goes and sits on the end of one of the beds, like, across from them. And still just playing around. He's not taking this seriously. He's like, well, she does this little thing with her tongue. (laughs) Oh, my God. And Elena stops him. And she's like, something that matters, Damon, obviously. Which I love. Yeah. Something that matters. And then what he says. Something that matters. And the first thing that comes to his mind, he doesn't really even take much time to think. He does answer pretty seriously. He says... Mm -hmm. She spent her last day in paradise, soaking in the sun and reminiscing about what it means to be human. And when death came, she didn't fear it. And Elena says, I was with her on her last day and Mm -hmm. she definitely wasn't in paradise. If you don't remember the episode, Rose died from a werewolf bite and was like on a rampage. She was murdering people. She was not of her right mind at all. So Elena's like, huh? Mm -hmm. But Jeremy is kind of like looking off elsewhere like in the distance at this point and he fills in it was in the dream he gave her she's here and damon looks around and he can't see her but rose is sitting on the bed next to him so Whoa. sweet i cried yeah. immediately as soon as i oh, saw I rose know. I, I had tears i yeah. love her so much even just damon describing her last day that's true. i started tearing up i love her yeah. so much i love them yeah it's great she's one of my favorite like short-lived characters Same. you know like she gets such a small run in season two but she's so impactful so, it's so yeah brilliant. which on that note like this reveal we talked a lot about it in season two in the rose episodes so if you didn't watch those like go back if you want yes. more of this because 
this is so integral to Delena. Yeah. Like, this is her finding this out finally after all this time. How many months later must this be? It has to be. It's so got to be close long. to a year. Or well, six, no, I guess six months. months. Something yeah, like I that. I guess the season is like six months. Um, so, a but long yeah, it's time. been a long time. Like, because that was pre like Jenna dying and everything. Yeah, that like, was it's a, been long a long time. time ago. And her now finding out yeah. that Damon did that for her, that he gave her. Well, we'll talk about it later. It comes up again, obviously. Of course. But like, yeah, this is such an important moment Huge. for them. And yeah. this, you know, this is where it's like this weird thing of being like, go on this road trip to see how you feel about yep. Damon and getting a moment like, you know, I've had those moments before with a person yep. where you're interested in them and you're like, I need a sign that it's meant to be or it's not. Yeah, and then yeah. you get the sign and you're like, wait, wait, wait. I didn't mean like I that. I didn't want it. Yeah. I can take it back. I wasn't ready back. for it. Yeah. And that's how Elena, I think, is feeling in this moment. I think so too. it's like, wait a second. Definitely. <laughs> I don't know how I felt about that. Yeah. Also, I just loved that like that. I, I mean, I said this before. I love this. Something matters. Something that matters leading up to it. And I love that Damon just saying that was like enough to call her. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't know. It just, I feel like that really does speak to how impactful it was for the two of them. Not That's for Delaney, but for Damon and Rose. Yeah, almost like she's already keeping an eye on him. Yeah. She's listening for him, watching out for him. Yeah. Um, and clearly, based on what she ends up like saying later, she's like keeping some attention to him. Definitely. So, yeah, I love them. I love them. Oh, I wish we had more. I mean, they do such like a, a perfect amount. Yeah. I think we said but that I, in season yeah, two yeah. as well, where we were like, it's so perfect. It's so perfect. You don't want to change like, it. You want more? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But this was a great way to give more yeah. without like changing yes. it. Just enhance it. Definitely. A, um, a couple I don't want more of, but we do get some more of <laughs> <laughs> finally what after a, a while. Um, at the Lockwood Cellar, or like outside of it in the woods, Caroline is just kind of like walking through the woods. Mm-hmm. She stops near the stairs that go down to the cellar and is looking around when she hears a noise and she smiles and turns and Tyler is finally back. When's the last time we saw Tyler? It's been, been a long time time like five six episodes something like that yeah and he's just standing there and she says a quiet little hi yep. and he says you have no idea how much i've missed you and she smiles and they kiss they make out all the way down to the cellar yeah enough said enough it's, said yes yeah, it goes on for a minute but it yeah. does yeah she pulls off her coat they start making out he pulls off his shirt yep. they're smiling whatever yep. it's nice to see tyler but it's easily the plot that i'm the least interested in oh my god when you think like the denver situation is yeah. obviously so <sighs> interesting the stefan and lark stuff i find very interesting yes i Dark love that lark. combination i love a unique combination of characters in a show and now we get this whole scene this, of Caroline and Tyler just yeah, like, I don't know, I don't making know. out in the cellar. I'm like, oh boy. Also, sorry, they could never make me ship it. They could <laughs> never make me ship it. I was like, it's... I in liked this episode him pre-hybrid, but post-hybrid, I, I can never yeah. get back on the... the I chain. know. I know. I guess it's tainted as a rewatcher. I know, like, where his whole thing yeah. goes, and I'm like... Yeah. I can't, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard to like him. It is really hard to like him. Right now, it's supposed to be the whole, we haven't seen him in a while. We're excited. Like, wow, he's back. Tyler, yay. But it's definitely just like, oh, great. Yeah, here we go. (laughs) Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. A couple of the should give me that vibe, but honestly, doesn't really in this episode. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this. Yeah. We see Matt pulling up to the Klaus Michelson mansion and in his like blue truck which i again yeah i, I love, always love the when they have truck. his blue truck yeah, yeah. it's so matt so many blue eyes like, it the is blue um and then we see he's like driving rebecca home and he says to rebecca like here we are home sweet home and rebecca is of course can't trust anyone she's like okay spill why are you being so nice to me and matt is just like i drove you home you don't have a car <laughs> like this is like i would do this to anyone at school yeah. And Rebecca is like, no, not that. I mean, helping me with the dance, standing up to Caroline. Like, I don't buy any of it. It meaning the whole gentlemanly thing. Because she points out, after everything my family has done to you, you probably wouldn't just be this nice. Like, what are you up to? Yeah. And Matt is like, it's sad that you can't just get a ride home from school without thinking there's some ulterior motive. It which, is sad. True, but also gaslighter. <laughs> there is an ulterior motive, but yeah. he is right. And Rebecca is like, you're right. I'm probably going to organize the whole dance and then have to compel myself a date. And Matt is just like, let's not get crazy. Okay, bye. <laughs> Which she was so fishing for an invite to the dance and he yeah, did not bite. She definitely was. I would die. I would die. Well, also, I was like, this is crazy because how do like normal other characters from the school not end up somehow dating some of these characters? I like, know. Rebecca is 
gorgeous. She yeah, is a she's gorgeous like the new person. Popular girl. She, yeah, she's a cheerleader. Yeah, she's like running the dances. Like, how are people not obsessed with her? Like, we went to a small town school. When somebody shows yeah. up randomly, everyone's obsessed with that. Yeah, like, exactly. There's no. no one other than Matt that ever ever wants to take her to a dance or date her. And I get that you don't want to add in like side characters because it needs to be like a larger purpose, mm-hmm. but. I don't know. It's just unbelievable to me. It is someone a that looks bit. like her doesn't get asked I know. out ever. Yeah, and we yeah, we saw she's like incredible at like the gymnastics and stuff yeah. of the cheerleading. Yeah, no, come on. No, I know. It's a little it's bit like Yeah, no. Everyone would be obsessed with her. Which I guess maybe it's the nineteen twenties is showing too much at school. Yeah. Like, her being like, This isn't the world fair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right, right girl. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Even then, I'm like, people will accept a degree of weirdness. That's true. No, that especially when you're new and interesting yeah. and yeah, and beautiful. Yeah. No, no, I know. I always think that to him. Like the best she can ever scrounge up is Matt. Yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, she like gets out and like thanks him for the ride and says goodbye to him too. And then Matt drives away. She's <gasps> wait. I also have to say about the driving. <laughs> Did she run to school? How does she get into school? Is she pulling the Stefan. I don't have a car. I have to run to school and then bum my way on for a ride. Like. <laughs> I just have to wonder. I have to. I have no idea. I can't imagine Klaus question. is dropping Klaus off. Klaus drops her off. Does Klaus have a car? I think he runs everywhere too. I really think everyone is just running everywhere all the I time. Too. If they don't canonically have a car that we know about, they're, they're running. running everywhere. They're running. Absolutely. Yeah. Rebecca probably runs. I have to assume someone gives her some sort of ride. Yeah. I feel like she must be able to compel people too. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like she compels someone to give her a ride to school. It's just crazy. Why not yeah. get a car? I guess the 1920s, she wasn't allowed to drive. Yeah. I'm sure she doesn't know how. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. She's got a little side plot where she's learning. <laughs> Matt is like teaching her stick. Like she's doing driver's ed with the other kids. So like, <laughs> yeah. it's really funny. Maybe she did do driver's ed with the other kids. That's why they don't like her. Oh, <laughs> poor Rebecca. Poor Rebecca. But anyway. Um, yeah. So she's running to and from school, but not today. And <laughs> <laughs> Matt drives away. And she stands there for a little bit, like, kind of smiling. Like, even though he didn't bite for her invitation, he, you know, was still nice. And then she goes inside and she sees someone is standing there by the fireplace. So Rebecca kind of stops in her tracks and the person turns around and it's Esther. Yeah. Obviously. She's finally back. And Rebecca rushes over at her and, like, grabs her by the throat, holding her up against the wall. And is like, give me one good reason why I shouldn't try to kill you right now. And Rebecca or Esther just says, "Because I'm dying." Shocker. End of scene. Yeah, little surprise twist there. We haven't seen her in like forever. Four yeah. episodes or so, five episodes. Yeah, she's since all my children. Yeah, yeah, she's disappeared. Bounced. Yeah, yeah so. now she's back saying she's dying. Rebecca should be immediately suspicious, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, we'll doesn't see get much that. time to be. But anyway. Um, we've got to check in on our ghostly sound yes, story. Yes. Back in the motel in Denver, picking up pretty much right where we left off, presumably mm-hmm. Jeremy, Elena, and Damon are still talking to Rose. Elena asks, is she lonely on the other side? And Rose says, no, I enjoy it. I was running so much when I was alive. Now that I have the freedom t- to do like whatever I want. Um, so sad I know like her life was that sad and like scared like she was scared all the time that being just alone on the other side is peaceful oh I know and then I thought about it I was like she never even had a daylight ring so she can probably at least be in the sun yeah even if she can't feel it yeah ghostliness she can at least least she can see the light of day she can sit in a park and like remember what that feels like yeah I love her. But anyway, Jeremy just chooses to sum that up as she says not to worry. She's happy. <laughs> I know. Okay, Jeremy's paraphrasing was killing me. I know. I was thinking like, that I too. Like, him. I love the awkward, just like, eh, I don't really feel like saying the exact yeah, same thing. Yeah. So I'll just inaccurately yeah. repeat it, which I get for it's, story-wise. It doesn't make sense. To, to have them verbatim. Yeah. But it also makes sense for, like, Jeremy being like, I that's don't know true, this teenage person. Boy. I'm just like, yeah. But I feel like there could have been some way to, like, film it and edit it in a way where mm-hmm. he's saying the exact same thing. But obviously there's some things here he's choosing to not repeat. Yeah. Um, because Damon then asks, is she still hot? <laughs> <laughs> he's joking around and being playful, but I have to imagine deep down this is a, like, defense mechanism to be Definitely. like, this is kind of painful. <laughs> no, this would be so emotional yeah. absolutely i think so yeah let's talk to your dead one week best friend who, yeah like left yeah. before you really got a chance to like whatever and it was kind of your fault she died like yeah, yeah. But anyway, Rose plays along with that because this is their vibe. And she yeah, says, yeah. tell him he's still dripping with sex, too. 
Jeremy makes a scandalized face. He's like, I'm not saying He's that, like, basically. Absolutely not. Um, yeah, clearly he does not want to relay that. So she says, yeah. fine, tell him I miss him. So he does actually say that. And then Rose says, and tell him I'm rooting for him and Elena. Jeremy looks surprised, surprised to hear definitely. that. He's definitely like, huh? Wait, what? Yeah. And he just instead stutters out like, uh, uh she misses you both. Mm-hmm. And Elena also looks surprised like, huh? Like, yeah. We weren't even that friendly. I like backstabbed her multiple times. I know. Well, I also did. I feel like they did bond in the end. And they I did, did end up like bonding. But Elena's, they had like a weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I liked her facial expression, though. I felt like Elena was like. Pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. Yes. Yeah. It is yeah. pleasantly. Not offended. Definitely yeah. Like, but definitely not like. She wouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah it's definitely no, more like a of sweet, like a, like a oh, oh, that's so nice of her. her too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, Rose answers the main question here saying, unfortunately, I don't have any news on the siring front. Mm-hmm. Klaus didn't sire me. No original did. It was Mary Porter. And so Jeremy relays this and Damon immediately re- reacts. Oh, scary, scary Mary. Mary. <laughs> Not scary Mary Rose. No. <laughs> I love how Damon automatically knows. Like, yep. remember, I said this last episode, I think. Remember in 211, we don't all know each other. Yeah. We don't all hang out. He knows everybody. He knows everyone. <laughs> Apparently. Um, but Damon asks, well, where is she, Rose? And Rose says, I didn't keep track of her when I was alive, much mm-hmm. less now. Tell them to sit tight, relax. I'll see what I can find out. How was Rose finding out? What is she doing? She's I know. She's looking around? I was wondering this. I don't know. I think maybe, yeah, I guess maybe she's going to like last known addresses or so. I don't I even don't know. know. I don't know. I wondered that too. I was like. Because I don't think she can I interact with stuff. So I guess she no. just looks around. Yeah, she's just popping around everywhere. Which is like, probably why it takes like hours. Because this is yeah. like the day. And the next time we'll see her, which we don't even. But like the next time they hear from her is like the, the middle evening. of the night. Yeah, yeah or so, middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, no, it does presumably take a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did wonder that too. Not really sure, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, got to check back in with our, our little uh, dynamic duo, Stefan and Alaric. Yeah. They're sitting together in the cellar in the Salvatore house. And Alaric asks Stefan if he's like heard if they've made it to Jeremy yet. And Stefan says that they should have, but he hasn't heard from them yet. And Stefan says, Alina's worried about Jeremy knowing that she can't count on the ring anymore. And Alaric is like, who knows? Maybe his alter ego is a pot smoking hippie fa- <laughs> pacifist. Couldn't get through that <laughs> Couldn't one. Couldn't get through that one. And yeah. Alaric is like, yeah, like, you know, on that note, like, I didn't think mine would be so hostile and militant. And Stefan is like, actually, it makes perfect sense. Your wife left you to become a vampire and your girlfriend was killed by one. It's like, yeah, yeah it does make a lot of sense. Love Stefan observing. He's back in his scientist, psychologist, whatever. Yeah. He's back. And Alaric does say, like, his alter ego must really hate him because he's a failed hunter slash drinking buddy of vampires. Yeah. And Stefan tells him his alter ego is too judgmental, you know, trying to lighten things up. But Alaric points out, like, that is me. Like, he is me. I'm not compelled. I'm not possessed. Like, there's no humanity switch. This is just me. Like, this is, you know, what drives me. And Stefan says... No, like, he's not you. He's the darkest parts of you. The parts that we ha- all have. Yeah. Which this speaks to, like, the interesting ways that Stefan and Alaric connect and are the same. Totally. Which, I, I love this. I love this conversation between the two of them. Stefan is so too. baby girl in this episode. <laughs> he I'm really like, is. I love him so yeah, much. Yeah, finally. Yeah. I love the Ripper era, but I'm I glad know. we're out of it. I'm glad we're out of the tortured mini yes. phase. Yes. I had the same thought. I was like, okay, he's he really is back. Like, he's, yeah, se- he he's, he's like so season Stephen one. Again. Stefan again. Yeah. yeah. And in the middle of this heart to heart, of course, yeah. Klaus <laughs> enters the cell and is like, "Well, this is depressing, isn't it?" And Klaus kind of like shows them the stake that Stefan had that they already knew where it was, not Alaric. And he's like, "Oh, and I found this upstairs. So now my by my count, there should be one more." And Stefan is like, "Yeah, well, it's going to take a little bit more time." And Klaus is like, "Like why? Because we're waiting for that one to pass out." No, thanks. I'll just kill him, of course. <laughs> Always jumping to the extreme. And Stefan is like, well, then you won't know the location of the other state if you kill him. And Klaus says that he can live with that. But Stefan tells him, you know, unfortunately showing his hand, yeah. I can't. When we staked Finn, we discovered that killing an original vampire kills the entire bloodline. So now I don't know which one of you I'm descended from, but I'd really rather not find out by dying. So why don't we just find the stake, destroy it so we can all be safe? Obviously needed to kind of make this reveal to save Alaric's life, but 
Yeah. You know, not you great. You do see a flash across yeah, Klaus's there's face. A little, a little recognition. And you don't know exactly what yeah. it means because you don't know. But I do feel like on a rewatch, it plays very well. Where yes. it's like almost like an I won face yes. for like a split second. Yes. Yeah. He, he doesn't. Stefan doesn't catch it. He can't reveal too much. But yeah. He, he always. Knows. Joseph is very good at the yes. subtle like face expressions. He's such good subtle. Yeah. And I love Klaus as a tool here to like move the story along a line. Like, I know. It's I'm so like, in character, but it adds such a different flavor to the scene that mm-hmm. I really liked. Yeah. I think it's same. really effective. Same. It also, I think, really does help speed things along. Like, they weren't yeah. getting it oh, anywhere. Oh, of course. No. Yeah. Stefan wasn't just going to start beating him up out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They needed a, they needed a clock. They needed a push. They needed yeah. a push. Yeah, they needed, like, the clock in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Klaus, Klaus is always same. like, let's get this rolling. He should have put an iPhone timer up <laughs> there and been like, let's he do this. That he wrote with his stylus or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. He would. He would. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Klaus says, you know, just to wrap this up, he's like, so the fate of the entire vampire race depends on you finding a stake. And to get it, we need you to pass out, which means I feel totally justified doing this. And of course, Klaus rushes at Alaric, breaks his neck, Alaric dies. And then Klaus is like, they're sleeping like a baby, which I wouldn't really call that sleeping, but no, yeah, okay. just dead. But yeah, now he's dead. <laughs> yeah. Alaric's dead. He'll be back. He has the ring on, but yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, again, Klaus really um, moves the story along yeah. the line or at least resets it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard stop, but to get back on track. Yeah. yeah. Attempted. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, of course, that's going to result in a catch up needing to happen between the brothers. Definitely. Um, Damon's at the motel in Denver. He's outside the room. Looks like he just went to get ice or something. Mm-hmm. And his phone rings. It's, of course, Stefan catching him up. And Damon asks, any signs of evil Laric? Yeah. Which, going to start using that. Are you like Laric. evil Laric? Yeah. And Stefan says, nope, only dead Alaric. <laughs> Damn, it's genuinely shocked. But then Stefan says, don't worry. He was wearing his ring. Klaus was here. <laughs> Let's All just good. say he's very patient. He's not very patient. Yes. Klaus, of course. Of course. And Damon realizes, Cole must have told him that we were in Denver. Mm-hmm. And Stefan tells Damon that Alaric's been out for like a few hours now. He's hoping that when he wakes up, it won't be him. It'll be the other him. Yeah. And Damon's like, if it's not. And Stefan says... Yeah, I know. Whatever it takes. <laughs> um, and yeah. then he switches the subject. Were you able to contact Rose? And Damon says, yeah, but there's no answers yet. So we're just stuck in this motel until she gets back to us. Mm-hmm. Stefan's like, a motel? Yeah. <laughs> You're at a motel? Yep. Visibly looks uh, immediately distressed yeah. and a little worried. Um, and Damon either doesn't notice this or pretends not to notice this. And he's just like, yeah, we had to get away from Cole. I'll call you when I know more. And he hangs up diabolical yeah Stefan's sitting stewing reading yeah. Moby Dick he's like this is why did I do this this yeah. is stupid yeah a motel basically hangs up on him yeah, yeah. literally he's, poor Stefan I, I like, know Stefan made it sound like a motel is the sexiest place in the world he's like I know. I know something's going down did you get one room or two please tell me oh my god poor yeah Stephen. poor he's Stephen. going through it this you is why know. season one Stefan vibes though is because he's going yeah, through it about everything definitely going through it you know he was reading moby dick but he didn't catch a word oh he's yeah like, yeah he's read i read the whole thing but also i couldn't, I couldn't tell, tell you the main character's about. name <laughs> yeah yeah truly poor Stefan. Uh. But yes. So, of course, other sibling dynamic going on. Inside the motel room, we see Jeremy and Elena are, like, alone. He's Mm -hmm. watching TV. She's going through her luggage. And Jeremy asks, so, what's up with you and Damon? (laughs) And she's like, what do you mean? Nothing's up. Nothing. And you love getting those questions when someone's like, what's up with you and this person? And you're like, there's something up. Yeah. I thought we were being subtle. Yeah. What did you notice? Yeah. Um, But anyway, Jeremy's like, are you sure about that? Because even Rose said something. And obviously that surprises Elena. She's yeah. like, what did she say? But before Jeremy can answer, Damon comes back into the room and they both just immediately, mm-hmm. the vibes are obviously weird. And so yep. Damon's like, is everything okay? And Elena's like, it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> obviously, all good. I yeah. feel like everyone senses the vibes are a little weird. But Damon's like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm going to freshen up. You might want to get some rest. I'm sure Rose will make herself known when she gets back. Yeah. So... They're just going to, like, spend the night there until they hear something from Rose. Yeah, waiting to hear from Rose. Two gals also figuring out what's going on. (laughs) Back at the Klaus mansion, Rebecca is asking Esther, how are you dying? I thought Ayana preserved your body with a spell. And Esther tells her she did, but she's drawing her power from the Bennett line, 
and obviously when abby died the connection was severed so my body has weakened which i love this i yeah, love smart yeah they really ugh, the execution of this, se- this season yeah excellent um and rebecca just says you know if you've come to spend your last moments with your loving daughter prepare to be disappointed you should have spent less time plotting my death and esther asks is that what you think i've been doing on the other side i have been looking over you for a thousand years of joy heartbreak your fights with klaus the nights you cried yourself to sleep calling out my name not a day has gone by that i wasn't right there with you and rebecca says and yet you still tried to kill me and esther says because it shouldn't have been a thousand years rebecca no one should live that long and then rebecca oh i i love her she just says but i haven't lived it all so sad I was like, oh. Which is true. I was going to say it's so true. First of so all, true. she's, she's been, been in a box for I, Yeah, so she's many been times. in a box. God knows how many of those thousand yeah. years. Like, and she hasn't gotten to experience any of the actual things she's wanted to do. Like have a family or like a, you know, big yeah. love. Like, I know. I love Rebecca. You, if you have any sympathy for Rebecca in this scene, watch originals. I love her. Yeah. She only gets better. But yeah. anyway, Esther's like, I'm sorry, Rebecca. I'm so, so sorry. And then she takes Rebecca's hands and... And Esther starts to shake. And then she, yeah, it's a little over dramatized. Yeah. She knew what she was doing here. And she falls to the ground, presumably dead. And then Rebecca kneels down next to her. And at the same time, Klaus comes in and asks what's going on. And Rebecca confirms she's dead. So, yeah. Esther is no longer interesting yeah with us i guess theoretically for one way to yeah wink wink nudge, yeah, wink, nudge wink. if you don't remember this yeah. plot um <laughs> yep yeah it's such an interesting scene esther and rebecca are a very interesting mother-daughter mm-hmm. duo to me and i really yeah. like them like visually as mother-daughter and emotionally i, was, I find yeah. them very interesting i know i feel like well visually i feel like the casting was really like well done i feel like they really do look like they could be mother and daughter yeah but then i also think it's so interesting because esther has like a seriousness and almost like that borders on like a coldness yeah to her which is so different from rebecca rebecca who feels every like like alina she feels everything too much very like emotionally driven that sort of thing it's a very interesting dynamic yeah it's the classic mother daughter like duo of being like don't see eye to eye at all no don't yeah, really opposites. have anything yeah. in common like would as a normal mother-daughter duo would have been very like a grading relationship mm-hmm. that you know um is interesting to see in this supernatural way yeah yeah um but yeah the scene also made me wonder like you know why there's never a proposal of a deal to like make them human or something you know to I like know. which i guess at this point the cure hasn't even come into play yeah the we cures... can't play with people not knowing about yeah i don't know undoing vampirism or whatever but i was like rebecca saying that which maybe that's what gives esther that idea to pursue mm-hmm. that at a different point because that does play into originals a little bit but like yeah. you know that's where i'm like I feel like that's so much easier to sell as Esther of being like, I'll make you all human. I'll undo vampirism. Yeah, instead of, you still get one more lifetime to live out. Yeah. yeah. Rather than I'm going to kill tonight. everyone. Yeah. 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 You, you've lived too long. Tonight, tonight it's over. It's over. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so true. But, but yeah, it just didn't work right now. But anyway, again, mm-hmm. watch originals if any of that interests you. Yeah. They, they build on so much of this stuff so excellently in originals. Yeah. Love originals. Um, stuff that... Um, I guess they build on well. I won't say they don't, but I just don't love it. I just, yeah. Caroline and Tyler. Yeah, back to of them. course. You already know. <laughs> um, yeah, at the Lockwood Cellar, they're laying on the ground. They're both naked. They have candles everywhere. They have blankets on them mm-hmm. somehow. I was like, where did they get all of this yeah. stuff? Did somebody have to go back to the car? Or did they just keep <laughs> it down there? The dynamics are weird. Because obviously when they first went down there, it was just them. And now suddenly they've got a whole setup. Yep. But okay. So Tyler says, did I mention I miss you? bad and caroline giggles and like kisses his chest and they promise to do this in a bed next time and they're like Stop. giggling Ugh. but anyway i'm not a fan yeah i just didn't care for it but anyway he says once i figure out how to deal with klaus and caroline says tell him to suck it you broke his sire bond you won't have to deal with him mm-hmm. anymore and tyler replies it's easier said than done besides i won't know if it's broken for sure until i test it And Caroline sets up, confused, saying that she thought he was coming back because he felt different. And he confirms he does feel different. He feels, like, more free, more himself. But, you know, 
all I know is that mm-hmm. I turned a hundred times in the Appalachian Mountains. And if I can get through that, I can get through anything, which I love that they made it the Appalachian Mountains because there's always, I always hear about stuff yeah. going on there. And I was like, it makes yeah. sense. To have it does people, make sense. Men turning into wolves thousands of times yeah. there as opposed to anywhere else. Yeah. But anyway, Carolyn gets pretty serious now saying like, good, because Klaus might not be our only problem. Yeah. And Tyler asks why. And he also sits up at this point realizing like he's missed some stuff. And she reveals to him that when an original dies, their whole sire line dies too. And she says that Damon is desperate to figure out which original created our vampire bloodline. And if he finds out that it wasn't Klaus, they're all going to kill him. And Tyler like kind of thinks for a moment. He's like looking around and he says, but Klaus turned me. (laughs) So if I die or if he dies, I die. And Caroline says, Mm -hmm. I know that. They know that. The difference is Damon doesn't care. Yeah. It's interesting to me this framing that Caroline pins this all on Damon. I know. I think that's Stefan what I was thinking too. I know. I was like, Caroline just lives in a world of delusion about Stefan. She's like, he she could really do, does. Like, he could do no wrong. He could not feel like, I feel like basically everyone is like, let's kill Klaus if he's not yeah. our sire. Like, even Elena, I feel like I she think, would never say, like, oh, I want. I, yeah, Tyler I think she die, would verbally like, oppose it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, she wouldn't be that mad at them for doing no. it. Whereas, yeah, She's I think Caroline's it like it's just the Damon? only person. Yeah, no, no and I think Stefan is just as gung-ho, if not more so, than if Damon to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, he's mellowed out a little bit with the Klaus revenge, but like. Yeah, he'd probably feel bad that Tyler has to die. bad, but like. But he'd be like, we're still doing we're it. We're still doing it. Like, come on, it's so obvious. Yeah, so yeah. it's really interesting. Again, it does show like this Caroline yeah. delusion towards Stefan of thinking he's this perfect person. No. Yeah. When it's like, Stefan would definitely take the opportunity Absolutely. to kill Klaus right now, look, regardless of what that will do to Tyler. Yeah, exactly. Stefan even is, yeah, he's. He's trying to get this steak from a lark because they yeah. want to know. They want to find out what's going on. Yeah. So. I don't know. She's a little delusional about Stephanie. Yeah. But. She definitely is. Yeah. Also, I have to say, they, the scoring in this scene was crazy. It wasn't this dramatic. They were, like, building the scoring. Like, it was like, oh, Tyler's going to die. Like, well, it's hard because we know it know. already, too. It's just him finding out, which I guess True. sucks for him. But we don't know anything yeah. until we know whose sire line exactly. they're in and all of in that limbo. stuff. Yeah. Um, but I guess they're they're trying to amp up those like differences of like mm-hmm. who's gonna, you know. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, but the best anyway. scene ever now. <sighs> I can't even talk about it. Well, you I, have to. I have to, but I don't even want to because I know I can't do it justice. It's so perfect. It's so perfect. You already know what it is. Back at the motel in Denver, Damon <laughs> comes out of the bathroom, obviously shirtless. He freshened up. He showered. And he's coming out. He grabs a bottle of whiskey in the ice box, and he puts on his shirt. But he, of course, leaves it unbuttoned. Of course, that one of his black button ups, classic. And we see Elena is in bed in one of the beds of the motel, watching him. And Damon goes over to the table and pours himself a drink, and sits down at the table by the window where they were talking to Rose earlier. And he drinks the whole glass of whiskey and he kind of gives like a, didn't see you there. Like, look over <laughs> at Elena. Yeah. And Elena has been staring at him this whole time. And Elena quickly closes her eyes and tries to like not be caught. <laughs> yeah, tries to not be caught. Like, you know, probably trying to go to sleep, but also trying to pretend she wasn't just staring at him, watching him intently. Yeah. And Damon continues to watch her. And then Elena opens her eyes again and they're just staring at each other like, this is so drawn out. I'm not oh, doing it yeah. justice, but this there's a lot of tortured, like, long, longing looks. Yeah. And they're staring at each other for a while. And Damon eventually gets up and walks over to the bed and lays down next to Elena on top of the cover. She's underneath. And Elena says, you know, she kind of looks at him for a minute. And she says, you never told me about that, what you did for Rose. And Damon just says, it wasn't about you which I love. Yeah. I love. I kind of, oh, I, I feel like I could comment on every, I don't know if it's I better know. to just get through this scene, but. No, I feel like inject comments. Okay, okay, okay. I just love that. I feel like Elena really likes when something isn't about her, but like, like he did yeah. this good thing. 
I don't know. I feel yeah. like that goes such a long I'm, way to be like, oh, it yeah. wasn't about you. Like, well, I just did this. I, I feel like that is always a great quality in people where it's like, you're not doing something exactly. for the, like, yeah. praise. You're doing it because it's the right thing to do. I mean, it's the classic story of, like, when you, like, do something for a homeless person and you're posting videos about yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, come on. It's yeah. like, okay, you only gave that person food or money or whatever because you wanted the glory of doing it yeah. rather than because it's a good thing to do. Yes. Um, And Damon is very that. It's like, yeah. I'll only do good things in secret. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I love that though I like the only doing it in secret and I think Elena does too and Elena does ask why don't you let people see the good in you and Damon says and he's kind of like staring up at the ceiling he says because when people see good they expect good and then he turns to look at Elena and says and I don't want to have to live up to anyone's expectations and Elena was laying on her side facing him so then she turns onto her back and she puts her arm down, like, you know, she kind of readjusts and puts her arm down yeah. by her side. And their hands touch. Oh, my God. The, this shot. Oh, their my hands, God. He, their hands touch and he, like, slowly yep. turns his over to, like, take her yes. first. And she kind of gives in. Yeah. And they're just holding hands at yeah. a point. And they hold hands for, like, a second. They're actually in that holding hand position. And then she quickly, like you know, flustered, gets quickly out of bed, like grabs a little like sweater off of the chair and runs out of the motel room. And then we see her in the hallway, like the the outdoor hallway. And she's like putting on her sweater. She's like walking. She's like, you know, obviously feeling a lot. Mm -hmm. And then she goes over to where the ice machine is that Damon went to earlier and is leaning against it. And Damon comes out after her shirt still unbuttoned. (laughs) And she just, says you know without looking back at him she says don't and she won't look at him and then he says why not elena and then she turns around runs up to him and obviously kisses him it's i just (laughs) have no words i love them so much they are finally like an amazing delena kiss this is one of the biggest ones yeah i think it's the third yeah but it's this like first big where she initiated she's initiating it's passionate it's, it's passionate not... on both ends it's like this very mm-hmm. yeah it's such a bigger escalation over any kiss they've had thus Absolutely. far so it feels like the most important one in a way yeah um and it, of all their kisses yeah it's also obviously the iconic florence the machine song yes. like it's it's just everything it's such a moment and they continue to kiss and they like back up against one of the pillars and they're, you know, they're really getting into it. They continue kissing and then there's like a little cut and the music stops, but they're still like kissing. And then Jeremy comes out. of I guess he had a separate room. He comes out and they. No, pull- he was in the other bed in the same room. They had two beds. He was in the other bed in the same room. They had two beds, I thought, in the one room. Well, they were touching hands. He was in the other bed. I don't know. I don't know. I thought he might have been in a different room because that would have been too much for me. If that's probably why she left. She's like, I can't. We can't do anything in this bed right now. Jeremy's two feet over there. Okay, fair. That's why she got out of bed. I guess that's it. I just I didn't remember seeing him in the scene at all. So I was like, he must be in a different room. They don't show him. Yeah. Well, thank God. They probably were like, (laughs) don't think about the fact he's two feet away right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, wherever Jeremy is, he comes out and he's. (laughs) Uh, obviously like Elena and Damon quickly pull away from each other you know they're they're caught and Jeremy is like gives Elena a look and is like Elena and Elena is like oh my god Jeremy and before they can really like before Elena tries to explain anything Jeremy just quickly is like Rose found Mary she lives in Kansas and Damon is like okay let's go and then Damon goes back into the room while Jeremy and Elena (laughs) have an awkward moment Yeah. yeah like an awkward moment yeah. Yeah. I have so much to say about I this scene. So much to, I have so, so much, much to and say. nothing. I have so much and nothing to say about this. I have only so much. Okay, to go know. ahead. You start then. You start. <sighs> Where to even start with this I, scene? That's, that's exactly, yeah. First of all, I have to say, one of, I think why this scene is so important to me, is so important to many Vampire Diaries fans, mm-hmm. is it's not because it's a great Selena scene. Yes. It's because, like, the execution of this scene 
is so well done in so many ways. Yeah. I think one of the most prominent things that work for me in this scene is this is such a female gaze scene. Yes, definitely. And I find that a very important aspect of it because obviously mm-hmm. like a show with a largely female fan base. Yes. And I think romance generally works better from a female gaze standpoint than a male gaze. If you've never heard of female gaze or male gaze, look it up. It's an interesting like film technique about how a camera films the scene and what it's looking at, what the intentions mm-hmm. are. And there's like definitely the hand. The hand is so oh, female gaze. So fe- it's giving. Pride and, and I prejudice. will say, there's a male gaze element to the scene, which is like Damon having his shirt unbuttoned. Mm-hmm. That's very male gaze to be like it's about his form that he's attractive and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. But the thing for me, why it's so female gaze is like that shirt could have been buttoned up. He could have been it in a matter. winter yeah, coat, it doesn't matter. and it would have worked just the same. Definitely. It doesn't matter. It's, that's just an element to it. Mm-hmm. But it's so female gaze. The hands touching. Oh my god. That the the hands I would say for me are better than the kiss. Oh yeah. And that is They're like it's same such level. a same level yeah. at least, if not better. It's such a visceral feeling when I they know. touch hands, and she my like, heart jumps out of my chest. <laughs> yeah, and like you were saying, where she like you know then kind of turns onto her mm-hmm. back and like has this heavy breath like you can tell that she's like overwhelmed mm-hmm. like it's just such a visceral feeling that as an audience yes. member you feel especially on a first watch and everything about it visually is so strong too yeah the hands especially i remember i used to like see that on tumblr all the mm-hmm. time the shot of just their hands yes. and i was like i had a rule every time i saw it, i would revlog it because i love, love so that good. image the coloring of the blankets mm-hmm. the framing of their hands i think close-up of hands is so powerful in a romance story oh my god yeah it, it works so well here mm-hmm. and then obviously the kiss is fantastic and like they use the camera the movement of the camera with the lights behind them and there's mm-hmm. like a little bit of wind going on like, yes it's all so, it's so epic. good it is I love the set, yeah, the setting of it, the lighting, like the yeah. motel lighting. I don't know. Yeah, it's so almost otherworldly in it like is. a way. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah, even really, know. Ethereal? I don't know like a great <laughs> word to describe it, but there's like some. Yeah, it feels some sort of vibe to it. Yeah, it feels odd to say that because they're at like some. They're at a motel. motel. They're it's at a like, motel. Yeah. The least beautiful place they could possibly be, yeah. but it really works very well. No, it does. It because I also feel like you know they needed which is the whole point of the road trip anyway, they needed to be not in their own element yes. to have this moment and to 100%. just get to this place. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I feel like something about the way everything is lit, the wind, the outside, the different location, it's like, it just adds to that. It shows like, this is their moment. They're yeah. having this moment. It's so separate from everything else. Yeah. This is about them right now. And I think now. it's, again, why the road trip happened is it's like, it's the only way it was going to exactly. happen. She exactly. wasn't going to do this somewhere no. she had done this with Stefan. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, which the Stefan of it all, it's like, how? <laughs> I'm like, if I were Steph, if I knew this happened and I was Stefan, which he doesn't, but like crumble. I yeah. would be like, it's over. Well, and that's where I'm like, and I would really love to hear if we have any Selena fans watching. I know we tend to lose those people I know, because we're so biased obviously and of i'm course. sorry for that fact but it's just a fact of life because i really don't yeah. understand how you can watch the show as a stelena fan and see scenes like this and like the rain kiss in season six like i don't understand how you can watch the show and still think it's comparable with stelena because while it is comparable mm-hmm. on like a relationship level the show yes. gives the most epic moments and romantic mm-hmm. moments to Delena. Like, Absolutely. There is yeah. no kiss for Delena that compares even, to this. No, it's not even close, I don't think. And yeah. so that's where I'm like, I just don't understand as a viewer, the people who ship Delena, how you can think that they're sort of mm-hmm. on par. Because yeah, as much as they are on par in a lot of ways, like relationship-wise yes. and like friendship-wise, like, you know, the things that actually matter in a relationship, mm-hmm. story-wise, the way they're depicting it is so uneven. So different. I know. It's so different. So. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. Moving along, I guess, because we could talk about I guess. About I don't. Forever. I'm like, I don't even want to. I yeah. feel like I could talk about it even more, but yeah. I just, I love it. It's everything to me. But we got to check back in on yeah, Stefan. Yeah. Said sad boy Aww. at the Salvatore house. He's sitting Baby. outside the cell reading Moby Dick when a lark <laughs> finally comes back to life. Um, and Stefan welcomes him back, explaining that he laid there dead half yep. the night. Yep. And on the plus side, Stefan did almost finish Moby Dick. As we mentioned before, though, whether he caught a single word of it. Doubtful. doubtful. Yeah, probably not. Um, but yeah, at this point, he's gotten up. He's walked into the cell with Alaric. And Alaric says... This is stupid. Evil me or whatever you want to call Mm -hmm. him. He's not going to make an appearance. Why would he? I mean, the best hiding place is the one where you can't find the person who hit it. Yeah. And Stefan agrees. And Alaric asks, 
how do you want to do this? And Stefan says, I don't want to do any of this. <laughs> and Lark says, well, that makes two of us. But I don't think we have much choice in the matter. No. He then takes off the Gilbert ring and drops it onto his bed. And Stefan tries to stop him, saying, like, whoa, wait a second, like, you need the ring. But Alaric explains, what I need is hope that my alter ego doesn't have a death wish. So I'm taking bets that my dark side has a sense of self-preservation. So let's see if he defends himself against death. And Stefan is like, I'm not going to kill you. But Mm -hmm. Alaric tells him, if we have any chance at this, Stefan, you're going to have to try. And they look at each other, and the music starts, like, heavily building with, like, dramatic sound effects. And then Stefan rushes towards Alaric and punches them just immediately. Yeah. I love this scar. It's like a ticking time bomb. It's very, like, you know, the building rhythmic. um, Yeah, it just speaks Mm -hmm. to the whole situation and really heightens it. So we'll see (laughs) when we come back to them how uh, the beating up of Alaric is going. Yeah, yeah. Back in uh, on the little road trip, we see Damon, Elena, Jeremy pull up to an older house, kind of abandoned looking, and they all get out of the car. And Jeremy says, like, this was the address, presumably, that Rose gave him. And Damon gets out and is like, yeah, it looks about right. Like, sure. Yeah, I was going to say, sure. I don't know what that really means, but sure. And I guess it's old. She would be old. I don't know. Yeah, he's met Scary Mary. I yeah. Guess, so he knows the vibe. Yeah, I was going to say, he must know what they're about to stumble into. So they go inside, or they start to go inside. And Elena tells Jeremy to wait by the car. And Jeremy is like, why? So you guys can make out some more. <laughs> he's so annoying, younger brother. I know. I he love him, so though. He's so annoying, younger brother. And Damon, without missing a beat, is like, don't be a dick. Like, listen to your sister. And Jeremy scoffs and goes back to the car. And so Damon and Elena go into the house and Elena turns on a flashlight and the room is full of books everywhere. It's just like a lot of junk around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just very cluttered. More than cluttered. It's like, you know. Pack rat. Pack rat for sure. And Damon says like, oof, this is like vampire hoarders. Like it's that level. And Elena is like, who even is this Mary person? And Damon says, scary Mary. She's super old, super creepy. Like, yeah. And Elena asks, like, how do you know her then? And Damon, of course, is like, I dated her. <laughs> yeah, okay. and he, like, makes a face that, yeah. like, implies. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Elena is, of course, or she says, like, of course. And Damon says, what? I said creepy, not ugly. <laughs> we know his philosophy. When he taught uh, Jeremy about Anna, hot trumps weird every time. True. Yeah, Damon he lives by that. that. Yeah, yeah, he, he really, really lives by that. <laughs> it's true and then they hear like a a loud noise from another room so they look at the door like where the noise came from and they go into the room and it's still dark elena's still using her flashlight and she moves it around the room and it lands on the wall where there's a vampire who's been staked like to the wall like is being supported by the stake and then damon says like mary indicating that that was scary mary and then the lights come on in the room and cole is sitting behind them in the room in a chair with a baseball bat and says quite contrary <laughs> yeah the nursery rhyme. yeah the little mary mary quite contrary oh cole love them love cole yeah we needed his whimsy back yeah but obviously not the surprise they were hoping for since yeah they thought they'd gotten rid of him yeah no and now she's yeah she's dead yeah but dealing with um you know originals consequences mm-hmm. of their own i love how even though the originals are like barely in this they like, just keep popping up in little scenes yep. they're obviously the I driver of everything that's for happening. sure yeah um, so at the Salvatore house, Stefan is hitting Alaric again. Yep. Um, Alaric gets up and looks at Stefan and he says, you're not putting enough into this. And Stefan tells him, if I put any more into it, I'm going to break your spine. Yeah, you're dead. And Stefan hits Alaric again. Alaric falls to the floor. <laughs> Blood is all over his face, coming yeah. out of his mouth. There was a point, I think it's like the very last scene or like still of the scene there's blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah. At least but, I think it's his blood. Like, Yeah. No, it is his blood. And... The transcript said, because I looked at the transcript, but I don't know if this, I couldn't spot it. His tooth falls out, it <laughs> said. I was like, does I didn't his see tooth that. fall out? I didn't see that. <laughs> so someone will have to fact check the transcript on that because I couldn't spot it. But I was yeah, like, okay. <laughs> Either way, there's definitely enough blood that it's like something's going on in there for probably sure. Probably did. It probably did. Um, I'll have to watch it closely again. And so with all that blood, like mm-hmm. you said, Stefan starts getting the vamp eyes like the whole vamp yeah. face because obviously like the blood's still affecting him like he's really only been sober it's, for yeah, a it's second been like a day 
And Alaric tells him, don't back down now. But Stefan keeps protesting, saying, like, he can't because of all the blood. And Alaric gets up again and says, come on, you're past that. Everyone is constantly underestimating how hard yeah. all of the hunger stuff is for yeah. Stefan. Like, he's past that literally last episode. It was a day ago. Yeah. He's he, not past it. He's still struggling every single day, but okay. Yeah. And as Stefan says, no, I'm not. And Alaric gets fired up now saying, use it then. Mm -hmm. Give in to it. Try and kill me, Stefan. Come on. But Stefan says, not like this, Alaric. No. And Alaric is determined, yes, like this. You're going to have to want to kill me for me to believe that you will. And Stefan warns him, if I go this far, I may not be able to stop. Like, he's called the ripper for a reason, people. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, he rips. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so, and it only takes a second. But anyway, Alaric tells him, if you want the answers from my darkest side, you're going to have to tap into yours. So don't back down. Don't fight it. Just do it. Do it. And he's like yelling at him. Yeah. Kind of like you were saying earlier Mm -hmm. about the like, my dark side, your dark side. We're in this together. Yeah. It's a 1v1. Let's do this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so Alaric grabs Stefan's shirt and is like shaking him. Mm -hmm. And Stefan starts to vamp out and he throws Alaric at the brick wall. (laughs) Alaric falls to the ground. Yeah. Well, so he falls to the ground and this is what it takes. He's like looking down and he starts laughing and he slowly looks up and he says, you're so weak. You can His just laugh? tell from the voice and the laugh of I know. It's, it's not Alaric yeah, anymore. It's not Alaric. And Alaric gets up, and Stefan is just standing there in shock, obviously. Mm-hmm. And Alaric, who obviously is clearly evil Alaric now, says, yep. Look at you, one of nature's most hideous creatures, and you can't even get that right. And Stefan just looks at him and says, You. And, and evil Alaric says, Me. <laughs> I love these two. I remember replaying that you, me, dozens of times, like, laughing hysterically. Not, like, when it first, first came out, but, like, a rewatch, like, years later. I couldn't remember if it was with you or my other friend, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just remember repeating, watching that, laughing over and over again. Because something about it that you... (laughs) Me is so it's funny. So good. It works in the moment. Like, it does. I wouldn't change it, but it's really funny, even though it's probably it's not really supposed funny. to be funny at all. But I love it. It's so good. Yeah, love them. Not having well, they're not having a good time, but <laughs> having an equally bad time. Less I guess. laughs. Yeah, less laughs. <laughs> um, back at Mary Porter's house, we're picking up right where we had just left off. Cole is just like, shame about Mary. She used to be a blast. Don't quite know what happened. I fear all the time she must have spent with my family might have ruined her. She was a bit of an original groupie. And Elena, you know, tries to subtly, she doesn't know Cole knows, which yeah. we'll get that reveal. But Elena asks Cole, like, oh, are you her favorite? And Cole's like, oh, you mean, did I turn her? I think I did. But wait, no, maybe it was Rebecca. But there was a Klaus period. And let's not forget about the Elijah affair. I spoke to my brother. I know what you're trying to do. Like, I know you're trying to figure out who you descended from. And now you never will. So where did we leave off? And then Damon starts, or Cole starts hitting Damon with the baseball bat. And Damon falls to the ground and Cole continues to hit him. So Damon yells to Elena to like, at least tell her to get out of there. And Elena tries to run for the door, but Cole rushes over and blocks her path and is like, According to my brother, you're off limits, but don't test me. And then Cole throws Elena to the ground, which obviously does not make Damon happy. He gets up and rushes towards Cole saying, don't touch her. Cole just throws Damon off of him and is like, oh, dear, I've hit a nerve. Relax, darling. I just wanted us to be even. You snapped my neck. You killed my brother. And then you humiliated me. So then Cole just keeps hitting Damon with the baseball bat and eventually says, like, there we're even like, <laughs> i like that that's all it takes to even out killing his I brother know. he's I, like man if rebecca would have been a hundred more strikes or something I was gonna say, but finn, finn you got off easy yeah. yeah you lucked out like you, two <laughs> minutes of being bit with a, hit with a baseball I know. Eh, that's as much as finn was worth to me yeah but also if i'm elena i would have had the ick damon's getting <laughs> really destroyed here Nah, I feel like it, he tried. He tried to stand up for her. He did try. But he Cole did. But Cole was so smooth in this scene. His I know. Relax, darling. I, know. I love his relax, darlings. I feel like that's his catchphrase. I feel he like he says that a lot. lot. He definitely does. Um, and I, I love, love Cole. what he does. Also, Me him too. bringing the bat with him to this. Like, he I brought know. it from the batting cage here across state lines is really he funny. It. He ran with it. <laughs> he ran here with the bat. 
<laughs> like that's so funny of him and i really love that also i, I loved his earlier line about the original groupie like calling her an original yeah. groupie. i think that's a really funny like like thing to say i'm yeah. like i wish like we got a taste like or more of that which you get I a know. taste of it sort of in the originals a little bit um, yeah but i definitely feel like it could be expanded on it's like a thing i it find could. very interesting yeah. um but also i have to call this out and i feel like i could call this out a lot but the originals as much as the writing is good they always make pop culture references and stuff that they shouldn't know about because they were in a box like mm. groupies have not been a thing for 100 plus years i feel like that's like that's true it's definitely a more recent thing. term yeah so he shouldn't know that phrase i mean it's yeah. possible that he picked I guess it up he learned it in the past couple music, weeks but they do that all the time same with rebecca she referenced the world's fair which i think first happened in like the 30s and she was in a box in the 20s that's true they do that all the time and i'm like i know it doesn't actually matter and for like probably 90 percent of us watching yeah it doesn't matter it's just a little thing yeah. but i feel like i catch them all the time where they mention stuff and it's like they shouldn't know about that klaus can elijah can but like Rebecca, Rebecca and Cole, and Cole it's hard. They shouldn't know a bunch of stuff that they do. I know. I know. Sometimes they do it so well, like Finn not knowing tequila or Rebecca not knowing That's like true. high school dances and yeah, not have, how to drive. Or how, yeah, or how to drive. Yeah. Sometimes it's done really well, but yeah, they, they do have little slips Sometimes like that. Sometimes there's like, like that, like specific words they'll use or things. That, Rebecca, they do it with a lot. Yeah. Where she'll like reference some, some, like she was talking about the 70s in this one. It's like she went and Googled you don't it, know. I guess. I guess she Googled like, 70s. What happened? Um, yeah. Which I guess works yeah. just as well, is why I didn't call it out then. But yeah, they do it a lot where they'll like subtly reference something that's like, I guess but they could have read about yeah. it and decided to use it, but it is just a little, mm-hmm. it feels like inauthentic in a weird way. Yeah. So I just no, I agree. wanted to call that out there. As much as I like the original groupie yeah, as a yeah. phrase, I'm like, I don't feel like he'd know what a groupie is. And no, I feel like it wouldn't not. have come up in his first week no. being Yeah, the just learning the term groupie in the first week. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. Yeah. No, I, f- I feel like that's a fair, that's a fair thing to point out. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, going into the next scene at the Salvatore house, um, Dark Alaric is out. We've He's got back. so little of him in the Meredith scene in the last episode. I know. So it's really interesting to finally actually see him like interacting in like a full scene of dialogue for him. Yeah. And especially with a vampire, with the object of his hatred and like yes. everything here. Um, of course, the vampire being Stefan. Stefan asks him where the stake is, but obviously Evil Alaric isn't going to answer that. He says, you're worse than I ever was. Spineless. <laughs> pathetic. And Stefan has to keep up the threatening act saying, like, of course. tell me where the stake is before I kill you. And Alaric tells him, you know you're going to all burn ashes to dust. He's being frankly ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm like, he's insane. He's yeah, being he, literally insane. a lunatic. Yeah. Um, so Stefan hits Alaric <laughs> repeatedly yelling, where's the stake? He's just beating him up now. And again, obviously Dark Lark isn't going to give it up that easy. No. So Stefan keeps hitting him. <laughs> and then he grabs him into a chokehold, like clearly about to rip his head off. And Stefan threatens, I'm going to kill you in three, two, one. And right before he can do it, <laughs> Dark Lark is like, it's in the cave where no vampire can get it. Okay, and he also- starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> He's okay. I will say, Matt Davis popped off. He's like, it's in the. <laughs> he sounds like he's. He sounds like he's really he's being choked. I mean, I, maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe they were like, we're going yeah, all in. A little too meta. Yeah, Paul's like, we're going. We're having this out. Oh my god. And then, yeah, his laugh is like. <laughs> <laughs> the laugh so is good. so good. Yeah, it's the perfect <laughs> evil laugh. He's obviously so pleased with himself. And Stefan just so throws good. him to the ground. He's like, yeah. I got what I needed. <laughs> it's like, You're done. This guy. Go back to bed and let normal Lark come back, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he hid it in the cave, which is a smart hiding spot, obviously. But I'm kind of surprised nobody thought of that. The guy that hates vampires more than anything wouldn't hide something in a spot where no vampire can enter. Like, it's kind of common sense, I fear. It does. Yeah, it is pretty common sense. I do love it. I think the justification is we haven't been there in a minute. Like, since they took the photos and and everything. Well, I guess Elena was down there. Well, I feel like the thing for them, too, is, like, we only have a list of, like, ten places it could be. Yeah. They theoretically have the whole world. True. Which, you know, is they don't narrow it down to the same places we do they probably checked the school and they probably checked Mm -hmm. his apartment and the house and like wherever um but like for us it's like yeah well there's only three other places other than that it could be 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I do get it in a way. But anyway, Stefan leaves the cell, locking Larkin behind him. Good. Obviously, now yeah, that course. it's Dark Lark, he has to be trapped. <laughs> yeah, he can't be out. Um, so Stefan goes upstairs while texting, obviously to let everybody know like where it is. But he finds Klaus and Rebecca are standing upstairs, clearly waiting for him and obviously have heard everything. Yeah. And Klaus asks, that wasn't too hard, was it? Clearly, yeah. they're gonna like go into like you know go get the steak and it's over. Yeah, they they're gonna take control of this for sure. Anyway, back with Mary's Damon. house. Yeah. yeah, yeah, back. Damon has obviously been destroyed. His <laughs> clothes run off. Damon's His ailments. Out. Yeah. yeah. Um, Elena has her hand on Damon's chest, like asking him if he's okay. Obviously, and Damon just says yes, and then he like pops his shoulder back into place <laughs> and says that's better, and then. Damon sees that Elena is like bleeding a little bit from her forehead from mm-hmm. where Cole had thrown her to the ground. So he caresses her face and touches the cut on her forehead and asks her if she's okay. And she says, yes, she'll be fine. And then she grabs his hand and takes it off of her face. Yeah. And then she lets go of it and turns away from him. And Damon asks, what are you doing? And Elena turns to face him and is like, what do you mean? And Damon is like, this trip you kissing me like what the hell is this and elena just tells him stefan thinks that i have feelings for you and damon asks her do you and she just says she kind of like stammers hesitates she's like i don't know like i do not know and damon is like well i guess you thought this little trip could help you figure it out didn't you and elena says no but then damon continues saying or maybe you were hoping i'd screw it up So I could just make the decision for you. Am I wrong? And Elena doesn't answer. She just says, you know, Damon. And Damon is like, well, am I wrong? And Elena says, it's what you do, Damon. Like, just admitting, like, you sabotage things. Every time there's a bump in the road, you lash out. Like, this is what you do. We talk about this all the time. Yeah. He's known for this. Yeah. (laughs) And Damon is like, what if I didn't? What if there was no bump? Mm-hmm. And Elena just says nothing, so they just stand there in silence for a second. And Damon says, I'm sorry, Elena. This time, I'm not going to make it so easy for you. This time, you have to figure it out for yourself. And then he walks out of the room, leaving yeah. Elena in there for a sec. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. It's such an interesting scene mm-hmm. for them at the end of like what this episode has been and what it was supposed to be of this yeah. trip of them figuring stuff out. Like. It feels obvious to me that after that kiss, he thought things had changed. Yes. He yes. was expecting a change. Definitely. And she wasn't ready for it. No. Yeah. Which is why, like, this immediately, like, comes out in, like, anger and, like, in heartbreak in a way. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he is, like, lashing out at her when she's kind of saying this stuff. But then when she does mention about the, you know, the bump in the road and he asks the what if it didn't. He sounds so hopeful. I was going to say, yeah. He sounds so like, what if I tried? I yeah. would try for you. Yes. And she doesn't respond for a second before Mm-mm. she does, like, or which before he, like, ends up responding. Her face is so expressive. Like, she also looks kind of hopeful about the whole situation. Yeah. But, like, it melts into this, like, bittersweet sadness yeah. of being, like, uh, I don't know. And which is when he does say, like, I'm sorry, Elena. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to make it easy. And he leaves. Because I feel like a big part of this, that shockingly, isn't acknowledged in this scene, which is kind of nice because it's good to acknowledge their issues and things outside of this. Yeah. But the biggest bump is Stefan. Let's of be course. real. Like, of course. That's the thing left unacknowledged is that is the biggest mm-hmm. sort of thing in their way, the biggest thing standing between Definitely. them. At this point, I would say the only thing standing between them. Oh, yeah. I so, would say so. I don't know. It's just interesting to hear them kind of yeah. fighting it out in this way, but not acknowledging that big thing, but still acknowledging some other issues. Yeah, I know. It's, I don't know. I think it's a good balance to the kiss. I feel like it's too, it's too crazy for them to have just gone into, oh, okay, we're a couple. Like, obviously not. And with Stefan there, they can't. Yeah, Um, exactly. exactly. Yeah, it had to dial back some way. Yeah, it's kind of like what we were saying a couple episodes ago when they like randomly decided, like they had to hate each other. Oh, yeah. It's like. Because they had that big kiss in 10. Exactly. We pushed it a little far. We got to bring it back. I feel like this is a little bit more of the same where it's like. Yeah. Okay, we're giving them a little bit more. Let them we have do, something 
dial it back. We have to still yeah. dial it back a little bit. Yeah, because we're not there yet. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, and there's also so much else going on, which exactly. is part of the issue, too, is you can't even, yes. you can't have the rainbows and happiness and love and everything when there's no. so much drama going on. Yeah. Um, so back to the main source of the drama, Klaus. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, at the Salvatore house, Klaus is pouring himself a drink in the parlor while Rebecca brings Alaric up from the basement, and Alaric's <laughs> face is covered in blood. <laughs> Somehow he looks like his nose is broken, too. I was like, I don't know how they achieved that, but it looked a little off kilter. Yeah. Um, and Klaus is... <laughs> Fully playful. Now that he's got his answer, he's got the person, everything's locked in. Yeah, he's like, this "This was a job well done for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's having his little drink and he's like, that's a little gratuitous, don't you think, (laughs) Stefan? I would have been more gentle. (laughs) Klaus just wanted to kill him outright. (laughs) But anyway, Rebecca announces, I'm going to take him to the caves. You're going to go inside and fetch me the steak. And if you think you're going to hide, you're wrong. She's saying this to a lark, obviously. Mm -hmm. And she pushes him towards the door and they like leave together. Mm-hmm. Nobody questions this. They're like, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Don't just compel someone else to go in there and yeah. get it. Take the guy that wants to kill us with it there. Yeah. Go ahead, Rebecca. Yep. Okay. Um, but anyway, obviously Klaus is more distracted by the fact that this is now his dream scenario. Yeah. It's just him and Stefan alone, alone in a yep. big house all by themselves. <laughs> yep. And so Klaus says, and then there was one. <laughs> Again, he stays obsessed forever. He does. I love him. And, and he tells Stefan, I know about your brother's little mission to Denver. He failed. Not that that's news to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he stays obsessed with Stefan and stays hating Damon. Yep. And Stefan asks, so what are you going to do now, Klaus? Are you going to kill me? Mm-hmm. And Klaus claims he hasn't decided yet. And he sits down on the couch with his drink and Stefan calls him out saying, sure you have. See, you've had every chance and every excuse imaginable to do it and yet you have it, which means Mm -hmm. you don't want to. And Klaus tells him, you're right. You see, I'm still waiting for my old friend to come back. And by Mm. the looks of it, he's just beneath the surface waiting to come out and play. Isn't that right, Ripper? Yes. Literally, he loves the way Klaus, we just talked about this. Klaus just got rid of his biggest problem ever, Ripper Stefan. And now he's already like, Ripper Stefan, come back. Wait, I missed you. It's so boring without you. Honestly. (laughs) Even though he's, like, literally his biggest, like, nemesis. Yeah, his enemy. Yeah. Yeah. But they're like Batman and Joker. They just fulfill each other. One can exist without the other. They need the other. (laughs) They really do. And he doesn't like that Stefan's moving on. Which is what Stefan tells him. He's like, I've been fighting that part of myself thinking that if I repressed it, then it would go away. But it won't. And now that I've accepted it, it can't control me. And neither can you. So unless you're going to stake me, why don't you get the hell out of my house? And Stefan leaves the room and Klaus is just left there, his drink in hand. I just love that he invited himself to pour a drink. Sit on the yeah. Couch, just hand. Stefan tries to kick him out, but I feel like Stefan, Klaus is definitely he like, probably just eh, stayed. Yeah. I'll finish my drink at least. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, I will say I do love their dynamic, even though they really kind of stay hating each other. They don't yeah. really fully ever yeah. come back from that. I wish they had. I wish they had. I wish, I wish there had. was some way. Um, I wish they could have been friends. Again. Yeah. But, but yeah. This anyway, is good too. I do like this too. dynamic too. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, the last little, the last oh, Speaking great of scene, a dynamic. I also, I will say, I kind of like the scene. I don't know. It's so hard. I like every scene. I was going to say, I kind of like the scene more than others. Oh my God. But, oh, no, I mean, first of all, love Rose. Yeah. I don't know. This really does it for me. Yeah. This, but just to go into what anyway. it is, it's such a quick little scene. Jeremy, Elena, and Damon mm-hmm. are driving back to Mystic Falls. Jeremy glances Elena, and then he turns and sees that Rose is in the seat next to him. And I love that she appears just to talk to Jeremy. I feel like more girls should do that. Someone who can finally talk to them. Yeah. But Rose honestly. says to him, are we there yet? Joking. And then she says, don't tell them I'm here. They had a fight. And Jeremy doesn't respond. Clearly, the vibes are weird. And he kind of just nods that mm-hmm. he's going to listen to her. And she tells him, I know you want to stop it. Protect her from him. But you're young. You don't see what I see. It's not just that she makes him a better person. She does. But he changes her too. Damon challenges her. He surprises her. He makes her question her life, her beliefs. Stefan is different. His love is pure. He'll always be good for her. Damon is either the best thing for her or the worst. And... That's where the scene ends. The writers 
are so crazy for this scene. I know. This gives so much fuel to the Delana fire. I'm like, I don't understand. Again, like I said earlier, like I don't understand how you can like watch scenes like this and be no. like, the writers want Delana to happen. No, this is what I'm saying. I feel like this, the you want to love that consumes you, like all of that stuff. Like, yeah, they're giving them passion that just Selena just doesn't have. Like, they're just not writing. It I know. For them. Well, and that's the thing that's unfortunate because like I've really grown to really like Selena. Mm-hmm. Me um, too. As I've gotten older, but I just think like as a viewer, like there's no just, way I could yeah. logically say that Selena. They're not giving Stel- it. Stefan yeah. is maybe better for Elena. Is the argument? Sure. Um, and like Rose just said there, like Stefan's love for Elena is pure. It is right, but. Yeah, it's like we're not getting any sort of passion, any flavor, any like... No. There's no support as a viewer to be Mm -mm. like, the scenes aren't adding up. They just don't compare. Yeah. So... No, I know. I don't know. It was crazy. But I do like that double-edged sword that Rose gives there. And that's sort of the one benefit you can give towards the writers of of claiming that it's even between the love triangle is that the best... Like, Damon is the best thing for her or the worst. Or the worst. worst. Yes. Um, That's sort of their saving grace. Yeah. They're like, like, well... You can't tip the tables too far. Yeah, yeah. We can dial it back still a little bit, right? Yeah. 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 No, I know. I've always loved that Rose speech. The first time I watched that, I was like, play it again. This episode is incredible. I remember (laughs) the first time watching this episode and being like, immediately watching that again. Again. Yeah. Again. Yeah. 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 Truly. But... The scenes I probably would have skipped the second time around. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, but but not a, I mean, how can you compare? But anyway, back at the Forbes house, Tyler is sitting on Caroline's bed and Caroline comes in and says that Liz said that he could stay there. Tyler's going to stay there. I don't know why he can't just stay at his own this house. This was I was going to ask too. Tyler, or like Klaus has 24-7 guards yeah. at Carol's house, yeah. not the Forbes house. Like. I get I that know. he has to stay under the radar from Klaus, but... Yeah, but I feel like it's so much... Which they'll kind of get into. It's so much more likely that Klaus is just going to pop up here than yeah, at the Lockwood 100%. house. I doubt he's keeping much of an eye on Carol at all, but... No, but whatever. So Tyler is going to stay here, and he, like, makes a joke about asking if Liz said that he could share the bed. And uh, Caroline is like, of course, no. She said yeah. you could sleep on the couch. And at least until we figure out, like, what Damon and Stefan find out about Klaus... And then Tyler asks, you know, what if Klaus didn't create Stefan and Damon's line and they try to kill him? And Caroline says, Tyler, I just got you back. And they kiss. And Caroline finishes by saying, I'm not losing you again. And then Caroline goes out into the living room, presumably to like get the couch ready for Tyler to sleep on. And Tyler sees the drawing that Klaus did for Caroline of her and the horse and it's on her dresser and he picks it up and he's like Klaus drew this for you like that's pretty creepy (laughs) and Caroline walks over to Tyler and is like yeah Klaus is pretty creepy even when he's trying to be charming Tyler is like wait charming does Klaus have a thing for you or something and Caroline says no as far as I'm concerned he's incapable of real feelings and Tyler's like I'm serious like what the hell happened while I was gone and Caroline says, Tyler, nothing, nothing happened. And he just asks, then why did you keep the drawing? And Caroline's like, you know, I don't know. She says she doesn't know. And Tyler says, I think I'm going to find someplace else to spend the night. Crazy. Yeah. And he just walks out of the room, giving Caroline the drawing back. And she kind of tries to call after him, but he leaves. Yeah. This is this the is... craziest thing to have them fight over. I know. Drawing. I'm like, this is such a... He found a drawing and he left. So yeah. It's crazy. I was going to say, I feel like this is such a non-issue, but... Yeah. I don't know. I think maybe what it reveals is the fact that he didn't even know that she got that is, like, a little suspicious. And it's like, what are, what else are you not telling me? Yeah. Because also, to me, it is a little weird. Because she's been... As we know, like we talked about last episode, everyone is aware of the fact that Klaus is obsessed with Caroline. It's true. And it's played into multiple plots that she's had to distract him or otherwise talk to him. And so it is a little, like, weird. Yeah. But he also doesn't know that it goes that far. Like, a drawing doesn't indicate all of that. Yeah, Um, I was going to say, his immediate conclusion, like, what happened, I feel like... Yeah. He just gave me a drawing, like... But the other thing that's weird is the drawing being right next to the nightstand like that. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was, like, The ball was weeks ago. Yeah, I was going to say, the fact that it's still out, it's still, like... Like, decor. Almost displayed. Yeah, it's displayed. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is definitely, that's kind of like a, okay, this is a nice gesture, so I'm going to keep it forever. Like, I love a drawing of myself. Like, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. 
Might be a, like an in the drawer type of thing. Yeah, I, I especially know. knowing the boyfriend is coming for the weekend. That's definitely true. Would have stuffed yeah, it in the drawer. If it wasn't in before. Probably should have been putting it in there, but it's I could, definitely I don't know. a little crazy to leave it out like yeah. that. But she also so. has nothing to hide. So well, exactly. That's yeah. obviously why she does leave it out. It's like yeah, there's nothing, nothing has happened. There. But um, but again, that is why it's yeah as ridiculous it is that this makes him so mad that he leaves. Yeah, it's also like well, you know, she is actually kind of. If she's not telling him that, there's so many pieces That's of the class true. thing. Why not just tell him? But True. I don't know. I guess because she thinks there is nothing, so why even tell him yeah. nothing? But anyway, getting into the more serious sort of plot at the end here, the last dramatic moment mm-hmm. in the cave where no vampire can enter. Alaric and Rebecca walk down there. Alaric, of course, enters, but Rebecca stops where the vampire barrier is. And she tells him to go get it. You know I can't get in. And Alaric walks over to like a crevice that's in the wall. And he pulls out the stake. And he just sits down on Esther's coffin. Obviously, he's not just going to get it and come yeah, back out. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, he's um, still dark Alaric. Of course. And so he asks, now, why would I give you the one thing that requires everyone to keep me alive? And she asks, are we bargaining now? Fine, what's your offer? And he says, there's only one stake out there, which means only one original has to die. Help me, and I'll make sure it's not you. Imagine Alaric offering this to actual Rebecca. She would have spit in his face. She would face. have just killed him right there. Yeah, she would have been like, you're joking. Yeah. I'm going to go get my flamethrower again. I was going to say, she's going to go back for the can of gasoline. Yeah. Like, come Never, on. None of the siblings would ever split no. up. Let's be real. Mm-mm. But anyway, she responds. Tenuous, but points for effort. You see, I don't want one original to die. And then Rebecca steps over the vampire barrier, walking into mm-hmm. the little cave. And Alaric is obviously visibly shocked. Of course. And Rebecca says, I want them all to die. And Alaric asks, how the hell did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> and she tells him, it was easy to fool Niklaus, but I thought you of all people would understand. After all, my son did use your body at one point. And he realizes, you're not Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And she tells him, no, my name is Esther. And I I believe we have a great deal in common. The craziest ending. Again, the great plot twist. This is a great plot twist. It is a great plot twist. I love. But also, how can she cross the boundary? Uh, That's the first thing I was going to say. It is unbelievable that just being in Rebecca's body would suddenly make it possible. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because... Klaus, when he was in Alaric's body, could enter the Salvatore house, but because oh, yeah. it was Alaric's body, I thought that was why. Like now yeah, he's like human. exactly. They're just bending the rules. Yeah, they're just they like don't care. okay. They don't but care. now, yeah, Rebecca is a vampire. She shouldn't be able. To she go shouldn't in. be able to go in. I think they're just writing it off on the fact that Esther, as a witch, can just like. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, because also maybe we did talk about this, like. Maybe it's not, like, the cave is just, like, owned by that's, the lock yeah. or something. Maybe it is a witch spell, so she can kind of... That's true. Yeah, that's the problem with this it. cave is we don't know enough about Not how sure. it actually operates. Yeah. Esther herself could have... Well, Done I guess the spell. I, I was going to say maybe. I don't know if she died somewhere around no, the same time. but probably already dead, but yeah. Either way, it could have just been some sort of witch spell to preserve the information that yeah. she can somehow now get through. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, love the original anyway. body hopping antics. Love yeah, when it same. surprises you. Because we've definitely got like more. They still do it. They do um, it all the time. They do it all There's the time. There's another good one that I really like that's yeah. coming up. Yes. But, yeah. Um, anyway. But anyway, yeah, yeah, that's it for this episode pretty much. Um, a lot of this stuff will obviously play into the next one. Oh, yeah. Which will be crazy. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, that's going to probably be like a three hour episode. Also, but. this is <laughs> another reveal that Rebecca doesn't get to go to a dance again. I thought the same thing. I was like, God damn it. She yeah. gets so close. This is another she, dance. Yeah. She can never go. I know. It's like my poor baby. Yeah. Poor Rebecca. <laughs> but anyway, this is a part of her wanting to live. And Esther's like, I'm going to, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we'll get into all of that. The 20s decade dance next week. But first, let's hear from you and hear what you think about this episode. Hey, y'all. I'm calling in about the 19 Heart of Darkness. Obviously, you could talk all day about the motel makeout, the tension, the passion, the music. It's peak TBD. But I do have two other comments to make about the episode. Number one, Jeremy gets all the flack for interrupting the makeout, but it's 
really on road. Like, she didn't pop back from the other side, see Jeremy sleeping alone and not go look for Damon and Elena. She sees them and decides there's no way their first time should be up against a generic soda vending machine. So she wakes Jeremy up. Uh, number two, totally underrated when Damon and Elena go to Scary Mary's house and get attacked by Cole. They get an honest to God, don't touch her from Damon. How come that never shows up in the billion Delena edits? I definitely haven't watched. It's perfection. Anyway, love y'all. Love the pod. Bye. Thank you to our voicemail hosts. We love hearing from you guys. Um, yeah, and to wrap up this week's episode, first, our in memoriam section, deaths. We obviously have Mary Porter mm-hmm. staked by Cole, staked right to the wall. Yeah. And then Alaric killed by Klaus, of course, but brought back by the ring. Yeah, so, what number are we even on? I was going to say, point? I lost track. I, I don't know. I lost track somewhere around four or five, so I think we're at like seven now. Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't know. It's been so many. Because also least... they stopped confirming him at this point. That's Did true. he die when Rebecca threw him down the stairs? I don't know. Oh, that was a good up. I know. Yeah. Also, yeah, I feel like there have been a few where it's like, who eh, knows? Unmentioned. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. I think it's got to be at least five or six. It's getting high. It's It's getting getting so up there. Too many times to be dead, I feel. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, But next is our out-of-pocket or things we would have done differently. As much as I said uh, in support of this, I do think Tyler leaving Caroline's just because of the drawing is inherently out-of-pocket. It's pretty (laughs) out-of-pocket. He was going to sleep on the couch anyway. It's not like he had to cuddle her all night. Like, (laughs) just sleep on the couch and be mad at her, bro. That's like, come on. Yeah, I know. Also, him just being there in the first place. I don't get it. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It's a little ridiculous, but okay. Um, my out-of-pocket was Cole being Jeremy's friend for months. Just, (laughs) that's so sad. (laughs) Just for this. I'm like, they didn't even know if they were ever going to need yeah. Cole to, like, kind of have, like, this friend He was a sleeper agent. Yeah, he really was. They yeah. also, like, we saw in the previous episode, he was, like, taking pictures of Jeremy and stuff. Oh, it's yeah. Like, he could have just, like, watched him from afar. Like, yeah, he did not he did need not to go this interact. hard. No. Nope. Yeah. My, I, my other one actually was in the exact same vein was Damon constantly calling out Jeremy for That's having no one. friends. That's a good so one. So sad. I, I know. feel like we got to go with Cole, though. I yeah, feel like for the that's long really con. crazy. It was not that necessary. It was not needed at but all. But actually, as we know from originals, Cole does like doing that. He does. He gets emotionally yeah. invested. If he'd had he another does. week with Jeremy, they would have actually been besties. True. True. I like Cole, though. I think yeah. that's fun. Cole, out of pocket. Cole, out of pocket. Easy. For quote, I, I mean, I always love all the Klaus dialogue. There were a lot of good quotes, but to me, and we already touched on it, I only went with one, and same for, same for song. I only went with one for both of these categories because oh, you sleeper hit. This is so many. such an obvious one. No, but there's so many good ones. You're you're kidding guess, yourself. I guess, you think there's not I like a guess. thousand really good ones in this episode. There are, but they're just the ones that I'm like it has to be. It will I'm always be. I'm honestly curious me. which ones you did because I have a lot in this episode that I really liked. I have four written down. Okay, you give a couple quotes. Um, you give a couple quotes. Okay, well, an easy one. Damon, next time we compel him, remind me to make him better at baseball. <laughs> That's a fun one. I thought that That's was a funny. Fun one. Um, I feel like any of the other three you could have done, so it's hard to know. Interesting. Um, well, I like Rose's whole speech, obviously. That's what I was going to go with. Rose's whole speech? Well, I was going to specifically call out the line where she says, it's not just that she makes him a better person. She does. But he changes her, too. Damon challenges her, surprises her, makes her question her life, her beliefs. That was, I, like I, that I took part. that last part too. Damon challenges her, surprises her, he makes her question her beliefs. I liked mm-hmm. that one. But that was one of my winner, interestingly. Yeah. There um, were some other Klaus things I liked, but. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine were like all Damon. I really liked Damon's dialogue. He did have episode. a lot of quips. Because I, the other one, which I thought maybe we were going to go this direction, was when Damon said, when people see good, they expect good, and I don't want to mm. live up to anyone's expectations. I feel like that's a really interesting line that, um, I don't know. I always keep in my mind as Damon. Like, it's so... It yeah. helps you understand him a lot. Definitely. Um, but the one I liked the best that was my winner, absolute opposite direction, was Damon's, come on, Rose. You oh. know you're not going to make us wait, <laughs> are you? I know you're obsessed with me. That felt like okay. the obvious Honestly, winner. I feel like that is pretty much the obvious winner. I know you're obsessed with me. I thought, yeah, I when you were it. saying it's an obvious winner, I was like, okay, I know you're obsessed with me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the obvious no, winner. No, no, I'm good with that one being the winner. I do really love that. I it's just, so iconic. The Rose moment is just so powerful that it's I hard to... I love the Rose moment. She could have said anything here, and I would have been like, <laughs> Best yes, quote. Best yes. thing that's ever been said in this whole show. Yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, let's go with the demon one. I really like that one. I love that one too. It's I so like a good. funny one. He had a lot of yeah. good clips. There was a lot of good mm-hmm. emotional moments, which makes it hard. Um, yeah. But I do think that I know you're obsessed with me. Has just yeah. It's become a life of its own outside of the show. So it has. It feels like it has to win. That's true. I do love that one. We can do that. But you only went with one song too. Yeah. I mean, oh it's just so gosh. obvious. It's so, it's so obvious. obvious. I have two other honorable mentions okay. because I actually Give thought them. there were a lot of good songs in this episode. I think there were like five or six songs in there this episode. There were quite a few songs. In total. I did overall like all of them. But yeah, they're good. Um, I first want to shout Dying to be Born by The Civil mm. Twilight. That's what plays like during the montage to Denver when yeah, they show up yeah. at the batting cage. It's a really fun road trip type song if, if it's perfect yeah. with the moment. It's just a fun, um, upbeat type of song that... Yeah. I really liked. I thought it deserved an honorable mention. I also liked the obligatory last emotional song. I feel like it kind of always has to be shout out, which is during the Rose and Jeremy scene in the car when the light dies out. By I hate when I don't know how to pronounce names. Crystal Alsos. Um, But yeah, it it is the last obligatory emotional song. I don't always think that an episode needs a slow like emotional beat Mm -hmm. at the end, but I think this benefited from it so intensely like it needed it yeah if i did an honorable mention this was what it was going to be i did really like this song it fit really well with the moment but yeah yeah really it slows down the pace it makes Mm -hmm. everything about the feelings but the winner obviously is obvious it's one of the it's one of those when you start the season you're waiting for it you're waiting it's one of the most it's one of the most memorable one of the best yeah It's obviously Never Let Me Go by Florence and the Machine. Of course. It's just so, yeah, the Kiss song. I mean, yeah, you hear this song, you think Vampire Diaries. Like, it's just so. Oh, I do not, but. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, I do. I do. I hear this song and I'm like, I'm in it. I'm in the moment. I will say, I don't want to hate on this song because I love this song. Yeah. But I don't think that because I feel like I, this song was so popular to me before Vampire Diaries. Fair. Yeah, I mean, I mean um, it's just generally like a it's hugely generally popular a hugely song. It's generally popular song. So I feel like that is my one sort of complaint towards it in a way where I'm like, it doesn't belong to them to me in a weird way because yeah. it's bigger than them for me personally. But I've said this before too because we haven't gotten a Florence the Machine song since 111. But Florence the Machine is like my top artist like ever i know they say this every episode about everyone but genuinely (laughs) like she is like she is my girl i know like i I listen to florence obsessively so like it's hard for me when a song like that is in an episode to like fully give over to it in a way it's almost a little distracting for me but i do love it i'm not trying to hate on it i'm just being critical for the sake of the podcast um because yes, I love this song like more than anything else, and the moment is so perfect that like how could you not yeah. choose it? Um, and of course, it belongs in the best you know song playlist. Of course. Like of course. of course. So yes, so we'll be adding "Never Let Me Go" by Florence and the Machine to our best song of the episode playlist, where we have every single winner to this point of best song, and we also will be adding all three of those songs to our uh, season three best songs playlist. And yeah. the name of it, where we have every honorable mention and winner from every episode so far in season three. So there's just so many good songs in there. So many, so much good music. So definitely check out both of those. You can also find linked in our various bios and descriptions, our TikTok and our Instagram where we post fun clips, memes, polls, all sorts of stuff, clips from the podcast, all sorts of stuff for you to comment and get involved and be a part of the community. Yeah. As always, you can listen to the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and you can watch the video version on YouTube and especially next week if you want to see us cry, I'm sure (laughs) we'll be crying. 100%. Yeah. Join us next week for season three, episode 20. Do not go gentle. The 20s decade dance. The 20s decade dance. I'm sure you all know what else that entails. Yeah, big one. Yeah, big emotional episode. Again, like I said a little bit earlier, it's going to be like a long episode probably. I have so much, so many thoughts already and we haven't, I haven't even watched it yet. Yeah. recently, but yeah. So yeah, join us next week for Do Not Go Gentle. Yeah. So thanks for watching and are listening to this one. Bye. Bye.